Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Hey guys, Digital, it's your boy, the funniest man nobody's ever heard of, Thicky Smalls himself, Gerard Michaels, and to my left at six foot three, 200 pounds, and every one of them is a problem, the master of punks, the tamer of sages, the king of the ring himself, not the good, not the great, the greatest, Mickey Go. How are we today, Mick? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for that intro, buddy. You got I it. I always love the intros from Big G. Well, if you like that, then you're going to love this. We've got the number one king, Malaka, in the place. <laughs> hey. Yes, the Greek god himself put it up for our boy all the way from the west coast fighting soon in the UFC our boy Christos Yagos what's up bro the what's Spartan I'm, uh, it's a pleasure to be on the show um, been looking forward to it for a while the so, Spartan yeah, yeah. yeah we've been talking Finally about it for a here. while now we're here for sure for sure for sure so uh, yeah let's get this rolling welcome and, Bubba and being that you're from the west coast and you do enjoy a little bit of you know God's greenery on this fresh earth. We think that you should check out Ruby's Flowers, WI.com. That's Ruby's Flowers, WI.com. Ruby's Flowers, WI.com has everything you need, whether it's an edible, whether it's a flower, whether it's something that, that something's going to help you get through your day, find your way with Ruby's Flowers, WI.com. Christos, you ready to rock and roll, bro? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. Uh, you look started. yoked, son. Uh, You're looking yoked. I'm looking lean. What are you lean weighing at good. right now? Um, I'm waking up at about like 174, so that's about just under 20 pounds. I gotta go. 55 or huh? Yeah, yeah. So I don't gotta really cut too much. And you're fighting on the 22nd, April 22nd. April 22nd is gonna be on the Apex. It's a fight night. Nice, Rick Glenn. What you think? Uh, I like I like this fight. It seems like the fight that I'd want. You know what I mean? I feel like he's I mean, he's dangerous, but he's not a specialist anywhere. You know what I mean? Right. And, um, I feel like I'm pretty well rounded. Yeah, I've seen him fight before. He's like well rounded. He's like lean, like tall, yeah, like yeah, more yeah. more on the much more on the lanky side. I definitely think I'm going to be stronger than him. I, he used to I would fight, say so. He, he used to fight a 45, so I mm. think this is his second fight at 55. He 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 had a draw with Grant Dawson, who's pretty good, and uh, he got beat for two rounds and then got a 10-8 round in the third round. So he does have really Grant good. Dawson, black guy. No, 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 white no. guy. Yeah, yeah, right. America right. top team. Um, he's submitted to Jared Gordon. In the third okay. Round. Um, good jujitsu guy, but uh, if he about to yeah, show right, him. I know exactly what you're talking about now. I don't, I don't remember who I'm, I'm mixing him up with. Yeah, it's yeah, some yeah. Dude who fought D Rod, but uh, yeah, yeah, he's uh, that, that dude's a stud. But uh, no, Rick Glenn, it, it's a kind of fight that I always wanted. I feel like it's the type of fight that's going to be very entertaining. War back and forth. Um, hopefully not back and forth. Hopefully one sided, obviously, but uh, um, definitely getting the the mentality right and uh, looking forward to a war. What you been doing in your preparation? Over and obviously over at Kill Cliff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm That's how we know each other. Yeah, one of my yep. first buddies down at the gym. Yeah, one of the only other guys that can submit me. So me, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he gets mad as hell too. He <laughs> so gets mad as hell. No, but it's good though because uh, it opens up the holes uh, in my game. So uh, when he's bigger than you, do you just be like, it's just because you're fat? It's just because you're fat. Nah, 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 nah. It's, it's skill for sure. Um, yeah. um, I think I'm pretty uh, strong in myself. So, but Mickey's bigger. But it don't matter. It's all skill. Nice. I like that. I like you know. that. Because every time I've submitted somebody, it's just because I'm fat. And every time I lose, it's because I'm fat. But that's true. Fat, so. <laughs> but in your but, case, but, the, true. but when I lose, it's, hey, you're fat. And then when I win, it's like, oh, you're just fat. It's like, what the fuck, yeah, man? This is just, bullshit. You're just fat. This is nonsense. Every way you're fat. Yeah, it's like, no, get off the mat, fatty. But you're also super strong. I am so, super strong. You know. Why do you guys hate fat people? Uh, we don't have Who hate hates fat, fat people? Yeah, every, you mean us beautiful guys? Every, everyone, <laughs> every one of these more to love, you know? super, every one of these super ridiculously good looking wrestlers is it just like, looks gross you know it does look gross i have to i have to concede it doesn't look great does not look great <laughs> but I Although, yeah hey, you wear it well Prepar thanks buddy you wear it well dude yeah well, anyway enough about me Pre preparation uh, preparation for this fight's going well um feeling good i'm look at the professional over here right he back. got he got you Pivot. right off he pivoted right off of you yeah. right as you were done with it good job Chris. Uh, Keep going. tell us more about the preparation the brother um i'm i'm focusing a lot more on my recovery um, very mm. important. I've been seeing you hitting that cold tub and hot tub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as far as like stretching and and, and doing uh like you know the nanotech in my legs, I'm really getting into uh, the cold water exposure. Whether it's a cold shower, I'm hitting the cold plunge every day after practice, and I'm doing ice baths as well. Um, just because of all the benefits and 
I mean, for the benefit part, you know, I hear how it can boost testosterone and how ice baths yeah. specifically. You, well, and sauna too as well. Right. It's more of like the stress. You're putting stress on your body inc- improves the testosterone in the body. Yeah. So I mean, that's what I hear a lot of people talking about a lot, and um, that's why it's really big and I think catching a lot of steam. So but, whether you go in the cold or in the hot. Yeah, you increase your testosterone. But I think, yes, and but I think there's like uh, ways to kind of there's like parameters around it. Like so, like I've been doing the sauna a lot, uh-huh. right? Um, I do thirty minutes at like around over one sixty. I don't know exactly what it needs to be, but it's around like one eighty. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. Sometimes yeah. up there's to like two hundred. There's, there's a range. Yeah. Right, and then so I'll stay in there for thirty minutes. I get out for five. I go in like they got like a like a shower that you could use to like rinse off from the beach Uh right out. So I go in that and I cool down and then I go back for another 30. Yeah, so that, it's that's it actually sucks. a big way of how to increase your testosterone. And your a, your natural like HGH. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I was getting towards. I think it's both. It, well, it's those, I think HGH is a growth hormone, right? right. Human growth hormone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Same, same. But yeah. um, just putting that kind of stress on your body, your bo- I feel, in my opinion, I feel like, you know, you put your body through all that stress, your body's like, I don't know what to do. I'm going to try to, you know, save myself and give you, you know, more cells, better cells. Yeah, and, that's... Um, and, and, you know, you, your body's like... Gets into this like survival mode. That's kind of that Wim Hof thing, right? Like that's the idea. Is, um, is that's how I started to learn about it with the whole Wim Hof method. Yeah. For sure. oh, sorry, for sure. And but it's uh, the same thing. Like like the people that do the extreme. Um, it, it's hard to, to understand what works and what doesn't because there doesn't really seem to be like any double blind studies done on this. But the people that do the extreme fasting, yeah, yeah, you yeah, get yeah, everything yeah. out of your system, and then your cells regenerate so much faster. Apparently, once you've fasted, like all the well, one of the things with fasting is your body's not focused on digesting. Like it's not your your blo- your body and your blood isn't. It's not rushing blood to your stomach to yeah. focus on the digestion. So it's focusing more on recovery and like repair. This so makes sense. Sends, so this is this is how. Jesus, I've been doing a lot of that. Jesus went 40 days fasting in the <laughs> desert sauna, just came back jacked up Jesus, ready to rock and roll. He, Jesus, he was ripped. He was, he was very ripped. ripped he was says. yoked. You know what, he what, looked like Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> what's interesting about fasting, um, there's a lot of stories of people that talk about them fasting, curing cancer, right? And what happens is you, when you starve yourself, you... Uh, Reduce the, the glycogen in your body, the glucose, and that's what your body needs to metabolize. And um, if you're not giving that to your body, your cancer cells can die out, and your body reduces new cells. He sent me a few things on this. We'll uh, we'll tag them up in the video. We'll, okay, like, that's put, the, put the yeah. links in there. We'll show yeah. them to you. It's, if you're listening to this and you're on chemotherapy, maybe don't well, stop just yet. Don't stop but eating also, or don't stop the chemo. Both. Well, Let's so keep I'd doing say, both. But I'd maybe say, do the I'd research on alternative medicine. Yeah, well, we can we can get we can get into the. Uh, uh, I have a funny story about uh, chemo as well. We'll get back to that. But uh, we have a friend that trained with us, Teal, right? And he told me the story about his mother in law, and uh, she had type two diabetes and she had ovarian cancer. Mm-hmm. She did a twenty one day fast, right? 21 day fast and so she's only like drinking water um i don't know the exact way she did it teal didn't really know either okay but as far as i know she did some type of fast for 21 days and she got rid of her ovarian cancer and her type 2 diabetes Mm -hmm. and she was like praising the lord thought it was a gift from god and um he really thought it had to do with the fast and then she like ended up stopped seeing doctors and interesting yeah and i don't know much more about that i just know that he told me the story how she got, got rid of her cancer and rid of her um diabetes and that really tripped me out and so i did a bunch of research and there's multiple stories of people getting rid of their cancer and there was people who got rid of their cancers with cold water therapy as well because mm. i think that, that that increases or drops your blood sugar oh i forgot one or the other but it does the same type of thing and this guy he went through chemo while he was going through chemo the doctor said not to like do any cold water stuff but he's like no nope. he he read uh wim hoff's book and his, I think his name was jarvis a youtube video on it and he started right away started going to um uh ice baths started running like six miles every day putting a lot of stress on his body he also went vegan too as well i don't know if that played any part of it but maybe it did maybe it seems it like there's a lot of factors for this particular yes, case but know. uh the first scan he did back when he went to go to get tested for his cancer the mm-hmm. tumor started shrinking the first scan and uh, it could have been the chemo, maybe, but he really believes it had to do with the with the cold water therapy. Well, one of the things I really like about hanging out with fighters, and, and this is something I think Joe Rogan has really added to the culture and the zeitgeist, is you guys have access to many more people that believe in what could be considered East Eastern medicine or holistic medicine than most people do out here. Right. And you know, I think the, that there's a lot of Western medicine, and we've talked about this before on the pod. Uh, that's really good. And one of the bad things about this moment in time. 
is that we've lost so much faith in Western medicine and the institutions because they've been politicized and they've lied to us. So it's hard to know what's real science and what's political science. And it's kind of the same thing with these stories, these mythological stories of yeah. someone just stops eating and cancer's cured. So I, I clearly don't have the answers, but I do think that there's probably some sort of happy medium in that every time Western society, somebody gets sick, it's like, okay, here's the surgery that costs 100 grand and here's the pills you're going to stay on for the rest of your life. And Western society is, you know, or Eastern medicine is, okay, this is your, this is your diet, this is your exercise regimen, this is, this is your... your your interaction with your your environment where you're not getting enough sunlight you're not getting enough air you're too hot you're too cold you're too comfortable whatever it is i think there's probably a happy medium there but it is good to to kind of self-educate on these subjects it's not i think so many people will hear what you're saying and just dismiss you outright Oh, for sure. And that that's unhealthy as well. But that's, to me, just as unhealthy as somebody that it confirms a bias that says, yeah, I knew it. I, I, I knew sugar was, was why my, my dad's dying of pancreatic cancer. You know, like that's also probably not the way to go about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think there's a lot of truth there because I do, I'm a big believer of like the pharmaceuticals and companies just doing what they can to keep you sick. Um, that's it. That's my own opinion, my own theories but uh and it just oh take a pill you'll be better it's a, it's the easy way out i feel like and do people really want to put themselves through discomfort you know mm-hmm. what i mean and but at uh, the same time we're living longer than ever as a species we're healthier than ever debate, as a species that's debatable <laughs> is it debatable oh for sure I mean, yeah you think we're you think we're happier than ever I, I don't know i think happiness is the the smarter people get the less happy they tend to be and as we educate ourselves we're more likely to be self-aware and self-awareness is the root of all unhappiness so I don't know. If, I think I think dumb people are happy all the time. You do? I do. <laughs> it, like ignorantly bliss. Yeah. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah. I think the more self-aware you are, like, you know, suicide is a rich man's game. You know, there's not yeah, poor. Yeah. Poor people aren't killing themselves every day. It's people that have, you know, expectations and, and you know, suicide is... is people are going to start killing themselves just for status. Maybe. <laughs> like, I'm smart. That might be next. That might be next, I'm right? smart. I could kill myself. <laughs> you won't. You won't do it. Yeah. Well, one of the one of the stories that kind of got me into paying attention a lot more was uh, this Russian dude. Paying uh, attention to what? Uh, to the uh, cold water exposure. Okay. Um, this guy, uh, uh, Porfiry Ivanov, some Russian guy in the 1930s. Um, basically, he uh, got diagnosed with cancer, and his doctors had told him he was going to die a um, pretty painful death. And so he was just like kind of gave up on life and was like, you know what, I'm going to speed up this pro- process. So he starts venturing out in the cold. It's you know, cold in Russia, snow, he, no shirt, no shoes, just venturing out. And they got some videos of him too, and nothing was happening, not even, didn't even catch cold. So he's like, all right, well, I'm going to start. So he started pouring ice cold water onto him mm-hmm. while in the snow. And, um, he didn't catch a cold, did nothing, and the cancer went away. And so for people also, you don't catch a cold from cold weather. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You catch yeah, a cold yeah. from germs. Okay, for sure, for sure, for sure. But, that but a lot of people, like your theory. mom, will tell you, yeah. put your jacket on, yeah. you'll, get, you'll catch a No, you don't catch a cold from the weather. You catch but a cold from, from people germs. People caught wind of this, and uh, he started curing people's diseases like malaria and um, some like some uh, some uh, tuberculosis and things like that and he started carrying people's sicknesses with it so he had a huge cult following after that and uh, if you look him up you'll see he was like some cult leader what's but, his name um porphyry ivanov interesting yeah, all right yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, omri will pull it up yeah we're gonna have omri throw omri some of yeah, shit. That, that once i so, saw that i started doing a lot more research oops sorry about that <laughs> uh, so. a lot more research and there's just multiple stories very similar stories of people mm. curing sickness and curing stuff with cold water exposure and and fasting as well and one of my buddies his dad's russian his or his dad's ukrainian his mom's russian and his dad used to tell him like an old saying uh, was uh if if the cold and hunger can't cure your sickness then nothing can and he doesn't know why his dad used to say that but once we started talking about the cold water stuff and fasting he's like oh so that's why my dad said that very interesting, very interesting. Has alternative medicine always been something you were interested in, or is this something that you came into? Who, who introduced you to, to this? Um, Just me not trusting um, doctors and pills and all that stuff. Always from the jump? Um, Not always. No, no, for sure. I used to take ibuprofen all the time, all kinds of stuff. But then, obviously, recently with all this, like, vaccine stuff, I started, okay, being a little iffy, started paying more attention. And then, you know, did some research, found some stuff, how the Rockefellers took over the – 
pharmaceutical company and took away all natural diets and natural herbs the, away the from pe- the, the petro the petro chemical. Oh, you're making Jared's uh, dick hard over here. <laughs> <laughs> no, he started using petroleum in in, in uh, pharmaceutical and, and drugs, and since he paid and, and gave oh, the hospitals, let's get in the fractional reserve banking next. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, once they yeah once uh, yeah, he's he's over the fasting. He's like fasting. I'm not doing that. <laughs> but uh, that's the that's that's the biggest myth I've heard yet. Yeah. <laughs> the fasting supposed to make you happy. Yeah, I think uh, so. Speaking of the the cold water stuff um what what do you do like i remember we used to do the the three minutes in the hot tub we do the conversion baths yeah uh three minutes in the hot tub three minutes in the cold uh-huh. tub three minutes in the hot three minutes cold repeat like four or five times so doing uh the cold and the because obviously like people that? we you know you can't we don't go wander out into fucking the Arctic. You're going to probably die. But <laughs> there's shit there's shit you could do to kind of, you know, replicate that in like a healthy, safe manner. So wait, wait, that's, give, let's, wait, let's let's give some, uh, some but that's information a great point. to the people. That's a great point because I literally, to your, to your point, I tried doing the sauna with Mick and he's talking about doing an hour. 15 minutes the first time I was getting dizzy. Yeah. Got out, did another 10 minutes, started seeing the stars and I'm like, all right, bro. Yeah, you definitely got to adapt. Well, that's, you got to work your way up to it. And it's sure, don't, if you're sure, not able sure. to do the full hour, don't, don't be afraid to get back in there right. and do it again. Your body will adapt over time. This is, this is not like, uh, this is, this is not, you're talking to two completely, you know, abnormal human right beings right it. here. Per- personally, I just hopped right into it and like did it. Like I just, I, did, I, I read about how it's good to do a half hour, five minute break, cool down. You look like you were going to go back in. Yeah. I mean, it was hot. And, and look, I'll tell you the truth. He's laying in the it, fetal position when I came in. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. It, the uh, the first two minutes are nice, and then the next twenty eight minutes suck. Oh, right. Yeah, and then I get out, and then I get I get to get out, and I get to run that cold water on me. And ooh, does that feel? Also, good. is two hundred and ten degrees too hot for the for the sauna? Uh, I, I feel like that's I pretty. It, hot. I think it's a little too hot. It's hot. It's up there. I, yeah, I might crack the door when it gets up to two ten. <laughs> uh, I might have done that last night when I got up. Big to difference between two ten and one eighty. I can look, make a promise then, you that. But look, then because I was talking about it before, and we started talking about some other shit, then. The uh, so the five minutes cooling down would be nice, but then I get cold. So then I get back in the sauna, and like those first two to like five minutes are like nice, like ooh, it feels good again. And then those last 25, 25 or twenty eight minutes suck. Brutal. That second set is fu- is is rough. That's where you like you, you know it's it's fucking tough. It sucks, but but, but that's the point. You gotta but for you love training progress. your will. For, you guys love training your will. Yes, but also for hours after, I feel good. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. So if I put in, you know, was that like fifty six minutes of suck? I you're keenly him. aware of a difference in your in your I f- oh yeah outlook I feel, personality. I I, yeah, I just I just feel good. I feel relaxed. I feel huh. I, I feel better. It, and it's it's similar to you know I've been doing these things like I've been doing a lot of fasting and I've been doing like you know the sauna and shit because I can't train like I normally do. Sure. Right now, so, you know, with my injury, so. I'm doing as much like of this type stuff, and it's mm. giving me some of like the endorphins and stuff yeah, that I yeah, miss yeah, out from getting the hard that. getting the hard work. In, so you know? why five minutes hot, three minutes cold, cold five minutes hot, three? Like why? Wait, are a, you talking about the conversion bath? Yeah. You're talking about the sauna? Now? No, no, no. The conversion bath. The, the sauna is thirty five minute cool down thirty. So it's sixty minutes. Yeah, but I, I don't. I think I don't. I, is that I every day? I think it's about. I think the cool down is part of it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> like yeah, I think yeah, you're yeah, supposed yeah, to. Yeah, it's yeah. Bo- like you're supposed to get yourself cold, stop the sweat, and then reignite it. And you walk for 45 minutes twice a day. It's a lot of shit. That's. I mean, it's a lot of activity. But uh, do you want to oh. be fucking uh, the best ever or not? But hold, hold on, one sec, Chris. Oh, so it's it, it was the baths because I, I wanted to give people some of like if they want to try some of the shit we're doing that we're digging. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I want so we would do three minutes in the hot tub. Which obviously just feels great. Three minutes in the cold tub. Mm-hmm. Cold tub's gonna suck. You know what I mean? You're gonna you gotta try and like breathe and like relax. Mm-hmm. Then you get back in the hot tub. And boy, does that fucking how good does that hot oh, tub feel that's after? The best, the best feeling. It ever. feels so good. And then you and then you get in the uh, back in the in the cold and you and you, you repeat. Now is All this right. mental training just to make you uh, mentally no, tougher? No, is, there, is there it, something well, so good for your body? Yeah. Here? So doing the cold and hot back and forth is great for circulating the blood through your body. You know what I mean? So when you go in the cold tub, it kind of like slows the the blood constricts. Flow. Yeah. And when you go when you go to the the, the hot, it kind of restarts all the circulation in your body. So it's great for all the circulation. But there's also a bunch of scientific proof that people do the cold tub and then let your body naturally warm up, warm up. And that's like apparently the best way to boost the testosterone okay. is um, letting your body naturally uh, warm up the way it's supposed to. 
But uh, there's benefits to both, doing both. And I do do both. I, um, so it just, Have you seen significant improvement in your recovery and your performance? Oh, since absolutely. You, really? Um, I, I feel like the inflammation in my body, is, it stays low. Um, and uh, I'm able to train hard uh, a lot more. I'm not, like, always so beat up. Because before, I would just, after training, go home, nap, sleep, and then get ready for the next training. I wouldn't really do any recovery in between. Yeah. And now that I've been doing that a lot more, and I'm not just doing the cold stuff. That, I'm sure that helps, too. But I'm also stretching, taking care of my legs, rolling out, just doing everything I can just to make sure my body is doing well. Because, you know, I'm not getting any younger. Um, so yeah, so it, it, feeling it. <laughs> in the 12 years since I played pro, the thing that I've seen there be the most advancement on as far as sports science is concerned is definitely recovery. Yeah. Keeping guys healthy. We we were really like my kind of generation, we were at the forefront of changing from weights to more plyometric and functional movements and stuff like that. Getting out of like flexibility, mobility, yeah, range shit. of motion, you know, get you know, getting there with the bands and all that stuff. That's the stuff was all still pretty yeah. new when I was first there. And you know, we didn't really believe in it when they took the weights out of the, <laughs> the you know out of the weight room we're like what are we doing here you know but then they got into the mobility stuff and they got into the functional training and it it really 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 improves performance absolutely but then guys would pop because you're moving you're bigger than you've ever been you're stronger than you've ever been you're faster than you've ever been but your tendons are the same as they've ever been so you saw all those you know guys getting injured all the time now it seems like they've kind of figured out a way to keep you big strong and fast but also healthy and this recovery stuff i wonder how much of this has to go into it and how much of like tracking with you know everybody knows where their proper weight is now like everything's kind of down to a science a little bit you know yeah oh yeah um we were talking to that point we were talking to lynn and we're like lynn's 240 and he says 250 too big, too thirty, too small, and he knows it. I mean, that's you know, that's a ten pound sure, variance, that's, and that's but that's through trial and error. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what that like his, his personally, and I think most people's, you you like it's it's like an it's uh, ideal better, it's an ideal right. way to think about like trying to like do like all, all the science and stuff. But I think sometimes you just gotta fucking just go and do it and. Yeah, you, you, f- you find a fuck up, you fix it. Is there paralysis you know I mean? by find, analysis? Does it like I th- people? I think there could be a little bit of that. It's, a, I think all this shit. There's such a, there's like, there's just, you know, like let's take let's take the ice baths after the training. Some people will say, uh, by doing the the ice baths, it, it'll uh, like it stops like the muscles that from like growing the same way it could mm. because it like it like uh, I forget the the freaking science behind it, but it, it's like. Some unintended say, consequences. Some people say ice is bad. Some people say heat. Some people say heat's bad. Some, you know what I mean? There's, there's always like uh, contradicting science and you know literature about these things. But I think through trial and error, that's really the only way you can really figure shit out and see what works for you. With the, it feels like a waste of time. Like, damn, why? I'm trying to do something good here, but now what? I'm, I'm fucking myself up by trying to do something that I don't even want to do anyway. You know, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's, so it's, it's difficult. But, you know, I think, yes, a degree of science, good. But also, yes, paralysis by analysis. You can overanalyze and, you know, spin your wheels all day doing that shit. But then, you know, find something that works, stick yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah, I think you whatever know? works for you is uh, is, uh, is the best. You know, you try, try a bunch of different things out, feels what feels good for you, and then keep doing that. If it's working for you, keep it up. If it's not change it up and that was something i even i even uh i talked to Corey peacock shout out our strength and conditioning coach down yeah, here yeah, yeah. because um a lot of times like football players historically like after practice go hop in the ice bath yep but like bodybuilders will say don't do that because you're after tearing down your muscles and like you know how you, you break them down and for them to regrow mm-hmm. putting going in the ice can like halt that yeah yeah, yeah you yeah, want I you want as much blood too. flow as possible yeah we talked yeah. about it i think so so you're 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 running the blood away from there so it seems like like it could be bad, but who the fuck knows? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. there's you can find just like on so many topics, like you know, like especially you guys can go back and forth about flat earth, not flat earth, <laughs> and, and a million other things. You could find you know both sides of the argument everywhere. Absolutely. So I think uh, at least with like a lot of this recovery stuff, it's just kind of go and you know try shit out, see how it makes you feel, see you know you you getting better sleep and you're feeling better and woo like you're more more up in the morning. Good. God bless you. Keep so, it up. so and, then, and but they, that, but that in and of itself is science. There, Mick. That means that somebody should be tracking their own progress when they're doing something. 
Right. You. Oh yeah. You have to have, be aware. Oh, yeah, I'm sure people have tracked their progress and talked about it and things like that. There's. I mean, there's tons of videos all over YouTube. I love watching YouTube and hearing people's experiences with mm-hmm. it because you can say all this science stuff all you want, but going through it is the best way of actually knowing in my opinion you know you can say oh that you know scientifically this and this and this is going to happen but go through it right and this is going to be what it's frustrating though hold on a sec it's frustrating um because i remember like when i was first like getting into like you know like i was like a teenager like first getting into like you know being healthy taking care of myself and shit i'd be like all right what's the answer do what do you is it creatine? Well, mm-hmm. you know, we're all looking mm-hmm. for an answer. Yeah, what's the yeah, magic yeah. What's pill? The, what's the, is it, do I, do I protein? Is it this kind of protein? Is it that kind of protein? There's so many fucking different types of, you know, there's, yeah, there's a way, yeah. this, that. There isn't really, it, it seems like there's not going to be, anyone who says this is for sure the one thing is probably just trying to sell you something. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's like, just, you know, try, try your shit. Do, do your, you know, your due diligence in, in getting research, but, uh, you know, you got to tr- be your own scientist. Do, do your own research at the end of the day and, uh, See what works best for you, for your body. For so this is, to that point, this is going to be your 30th pro fight. My 30th professional 30th fight. professional fight. That's yeah. that's that's not a small number, dog. No, no. I started when I was... Did you get like a gold watch or something? Or? Shit, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like a gold watch. But uh, yeah, no, I started pretty young. Um, when I was 20 years old, I had my first professional fight. Didn't really go the amateur route. Um, kind of skipped that part. <laughs> Do you wish you would have or no? Um, yes and no. No, because I mean, my career has gone pretty good so far. And, uh, but like, it did take me a while to get comfortable in the cage Mm -hmm. as far as like the striking. I just used my wrestling in the beginning because that's what I felt most comfortable doing. It took me a while to feel comfortable on the feet, the lights and all that. But, um, I adapted pretty well with it, but, um, very well rounded. You have a very complete game. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I focused, I just try to focus on all the holes in my game and, uh, like I, the longest thing that took me to get good at was uh, having a good guard, uh, being off my back because coming as a wrestler, I never wanted to be on my back. But um, I focused like a solid year of just always pulling guard and practice just to kind of force myself to get good at my guard. And I just always want to work on all the holes in my game. So I was really good about that um, going through my career and uh, definitely played off. You know what I mean? So because got got a submission off my back. Is the it title? <laughs> the, the more you work on your holes, are you in danger of? of Losing what makes you good, or does does that always is that always there? I mean, I always train everything to be honest, um, and uh, especially when you like start competing, um, then you go back to your strengths. But yeah. uh, as far as like, uh, I, I definitely try to put myself in the in the positions I'm worst at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, if you don't do that, you're gonna yeah. fucking get exposed. Yeah. So so really, like the what most people say the proper like uh, recipe is is when you're in the off season, like 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 me, I don't have a fight booked. So I could be working my week. I should be working my weaknesses now, right? And then when I have fight book, like right now, Christo should be working his strength. He's he's like a month out. Yeah, gotcha. He should be he should be focused on his game plan. He should be you know shorter sessions like where it's you know fight simulation fight fight simulation type training mm-hmm. where it's you know not like the fight's fifteen minutes max. Sure. So he should you know his session pro- like should be like around like thirty minutes or so. You know, get get in, get his work, get out, and then uh, you know. But but then if you're training between, you could roll jujitsu for a fucking hour and a half. Interesting. You know what I mean? But like rolling jujitsu for an hour and a half isn't going to be as as conducive to you know his. He has an event coming up, so it's not going to be as conducive to the result right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, but, right, right now, uh, training for the fight, I'm just focused on winning all my rounds as mm-hmm. much as I can mm-hmm. and, and competing and just using what I'm best at right now. But uh, yeah, when you're off uh, off a uh, don't have a fight scheduled that's the best time to kind of work on all the holes that sure you want to get better at i mean one of the things that frustrated the hell out of me man was watching you know we you know they they always draft people because of their their size strength attributes so you get a pitcher coming throwing 99 miles an hour but maybe he's a little wild maybe his mechanics are a little janky and then you know some coach gets in his ear and is like we got to get you we got to throw a two seam. We got to throw a slider. We got to throw a change up. Can't throw a saddle on a Mustang, brother. Man. There's nothing worse than taking a dude who throws fucking flame, fire, and yeah. then and then saddling him up, and then yeah, this guy can throw a two seam. I've fall, fallen throw a slider, victim to that. Personally. Can throw a fucking change up, and the guys can hit all of them. Yeah, but they, nobody could hit that 99. And the fact he was wild made it worse because people thought he might dot in the air. Yeah. Sometimes, man, if you're better than everybody else at one fucking thing, just do that one fucking thing. Like, if, if you're the best in the fucking world at one thing, 
just do I don't it. think that works for yeah, fighting. I don't, I don't think, think it's like I, I, it's all that I can doesn't work for fighting. To. But I can I can I can relate that to fighting where you can be you can like let's say you have like a good fucking right hand but you flare your elbow a lot and that's not that's not the right way to do it because you can t- it telegraphs a little more mm-hmm. so you could spend all day fucking trying to keep your shit tight you know what I mean yeah and then you could kind of fuck up what you know. Y- y- you're fucking up with what uh you're not dancing with what brought you to the dance. Like, sure. There's a reason why you know what I mean. Yeah. You get to where you are um, and you're good at what you're good at. Yep. So the you can and you're focused so, on the mechanics, not just letting it fly. It's, it takes a good coach to not saddle a Mustang, to let the fucking Mustang run, to mm-hmm. direct the Mustang and help. You know what I mean? Show them like like you know keep them in line a little bit. Yeah. You know, but not overdo it. And I guess that's what sucks about your sport. That's like a fine you, like line. you talked about it. That's the trial and error that you're talking about. Also, you kind of got to live it and experience it. At least in baseball, you lose a game you come out the next day and whatever you guys you know that's a fucking big error that's a big lesson learned you oh, know sure. it's, it's a really high high sit on that for really months low lows, dude. it's just uh but i mean look say at that like, again because that's big facts yeah that's yeah, big yeah. facts it's really really high highs and really low lows you know what i mean there's no in between i couldn't do but it. but the trick is there's no way it's not it. letting your highs get too high or your lows get too low yeah. you got to stay even keel the whole time yeah. You know what I mean? You got to keep. Uh, How do you for six months? You got to be because you got to be fucking. You got to be fucking mentally strong. This is why man. you guys are torturing yourself. This is why you, you hop in the hot tub, the cold tub, and you make time pass. That but like, you, it's easy a big part of it for sure. It's, yeah. it's easy to come off a win and everyone be like, "You're the fucking goat. You're the man. You're this and that." Mm-hmm. And then you can like feel like, "Yeah, fuck yeah, I am. Let's go party. Let's go. Let's go drink. Let's go. You know, yeah, chase yeah, girls, yeah, whatever. Yeah, and just kind of hurt yourself. Even and then more. yeah, you know, you got to be disciplined. Like, yeah, shit, still a lot of shit I got to work on. And mm-hmm. then there's times you can lose and you be like, "I fucking suck. I this." Like that, no, nah, you're still the fucking shit. You know what I mean? S- stuff happens. You mm-hmm. don't, you don't gotta go, go then start overtraining. I need to work this, this. You know what I mean? You gotta sure. keep it even keel. And I think that that applies to anything in in life. You know, so what do you think? Is, like, a, is a big, you know, it's a it's a metaphor for life. So what do you think? A guy like Usman's going through right now, where I mean, he didn't lose for ten years, now he's back to back losses, and everybody's you know talking about him like yeah, he's like he's done and shit. Yeah, yeah it's, it's there's always gonna silly. be those people who talk shit. You know what I mean? People love to talk shit. Yeah, your fans are pretty incredible in the fight game. They 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 seem to love you and they buy your stuff and they're all. But they also like, man, do they do they are they some fucking oh, haters? Boy. Some of the biggest Ooh. criticizers. We make we. Fighters. I think I think uh, people can feel insecure about like in in regards to fighters. They see. Like fighters and like they're like what well, you know what I mean they gotta have a little bravado good looking gonna, jacked up dudes go, out go there in, right um, so it's it's nice to I think people find like comfort in tearing a, like like a strong man down mm-hmm. because it makes them feel a little better about uh, their inadequacies or their fears and stuff like that like yeah. it, no it's good I didn't try because I, that could have happened to me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, th- I think I, th- I think it's like a, it's a it's a weak ass move, but it's also it's, it's easy. It's human nature. It may it, every everybody wants to feel like people like to feel like uh, they know better or they're better yeah. than. You know what I mean? Like we talked sure. about being a life coach. How being a life coach is like an easy ass job because it's so easy to tell other people what to do. But how about what you do with your own life? You know? Oh, bro, tell a funny story on that. I used to train this girl, right? And she was going to school to be a therapist. Um, uh, this older lady. And uh, she was like, give me all this advice, all this advice. But then she'll tell me stories about her life and she don't take any of her advice. Yeah. I'm like, so didn't you tell me uh, blah, blah, blah? Oh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I don't take my own advice. It was like, yeah, it's, why it's, are you it's giving easy. advice if you're not going to take because it? Because it's easy. It's fucking mm-hmm. easy. It's easy for me to say, Christo, just do this, this, and this, okay? Yeah. And like, but like, I, everyone's gonna think it's if they're like, dude, if, if I had, if I had his skill and his opportunity, I'd do this, this, and this. If you had yeah, but, one shot. Yeah. If, if, but you know what I mean? But it's yeah, a big totally. fucking if, buddy. A well, of, yeah. Uh, I mean, all bark, but no bite. Yeah, man. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it is, you're, you're right. There is a lot of, there's a lot of great MMA fans. Sure. But yeah, there's also a lot of weak ass motherfuckers. And, and again, but there's weak ass motherfuckers in anything. I, I think the thing that, that impresses me about the two of you guys and the guys in your business more than anything else, like I said, is like, if you're a man, you're manly, whatever, like, you, you, you'll fight. Everybody will fight. You get your ass kicked, whatever. But to get up and do it again, Every day, twice a day, three times a day, six months before there's a payoff, it's insanity. You got, I mean, watching the way you guys work every day makes me feel like I, I wasn't even like an athlete. Like, I felt like I was like, you know, like I was like well, at a club. There's something special about pushing your body to the limit. Like, if you think about MMA fighters, like most people 
can't even get up and go work out every single day mm-hmm. you know what I mean? because it's too hard. But we're able to push our bodies to the limit where our mind wants to keep going, but our body's breaking down. We're able to p- have our minds so strong that our bodies can't keep up. And there's just something amazing about that. I find something so... It's going to set... It'll set you up for whatever you're going to do else in your life. Yeah. It's yeah, going to yeah. develop you as a man and develop your character and your will. I, I think, you know... Like, sure, would it be more fun to live Justin Bieber's life? Fuck no, yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> it, 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 but, like, to well, go, and, well, well, the go kid, on stage the kids, and to uh, run around and do that shit, it could, be, it could be more fun. But will it be, like, more fulfilling? And, like, will it be more, will yes. you live okay, a more intense, point, truthful point, life where you're, you have to confront reality every day? Where the truth is being smacked in your face? A lot of people lie to themselves, too. It, it'd okay, get, but it'd, it'd get boring after a while. But do you guys I mean, think... You want. It, it'd be fun for maybe a year max. That's a good point. Like, oh, you know what, dude? Like, ah, but Christos, to that some good point. To that point yes. you made before, for from a pers- from a professional standpoint, not from a personal or perspective standpoint, from a professional athlete standpoint, do you guys overtrain? Are you are you in the best shape you could possibly be in going into your performances, or do you guys take too much out of yourself? No, no, no. I think uh, I mean you do got to gauge it and you got to listen to your body a little bit, and you learn from trial and error for sure. Because there's definitely times where I've been overtrained and. Um, trying to focus a little bit more on that, listening to my body. And um, definitely when you go into the fight, I think we're in the best shape we can be because obviously that, that that's the week you kind of rest the most, um, fight week. And uh, um, yeah, no, no, I, 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 we definitely overtrain, but it, it, you cannot overtrain too. I, I think you... Ask me that question, G. <laughs> go ahead. Ask it. Do you, do you think that you are in the best place physically mentally during your fights for performance or do you think you overtrain coming up put yourself yes okay just yes yes to both <laughs> yes to both yes. answers yes yes, yes. yes. Yeah. there's there's not enough time in the world to master four different di- like extensive disciplines sure sure so you need to overtrain yeah you can become obsessive about it i imagine yeah i mean i've overtrained myself into this back injury you know yeah, what i mean yeah, but that's yeah, the yeah. fucking that's that's the that's that's the you know, I rolled the dice, you part, know? Part of the game, yeah, to, it's, yeah. It's part of the game. Charge that shit to the game. Like, would you expect to not have any fucking boo-boos I, for after doing, after no, but going I, but, hard and shit? No, but, but, I, but, but if if you were too, if you did, like, too little, then you, you won't have the skills. I feel you, but at the same time, your job is to make money. You're a prize fighter. Right. So, you know, staying healthy is part of the game. Being able to fight more often than not is part of the game. And, and Trial and so, error. And, that, and that's the key everyone's trying to search for. What is the right amount? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's still ongoing to the 30 day. fights into your pro and career, no you, feel like you. You've got a, you, you feel like you got it pretty much down? I think I'm getting better and better every fight, um, for sure. And I'm gauging a lot better. Um, if I feel like, you know, I, I wait... Uh, at nighttime, I feel pretty beat up, and then in the morning, I'm still feeling like really. I can feel the energy. You know what I mean? Mm. How I'm feeling? I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna go live today. I'm just gonna kind of do something small, light, let my body recover a little more. Sure. But, uh, um, you got to be careful too, because sometimes you're able to do more, and you feel like you can't. So just finding that right feeling. Mm-hmm. At the end it's of the day. it's such a, it's it's all it's such weird. a contradiction. This is fucking frustrating. There's no answer here, so boys. It's so fucking frustrating. <laughs> it's, it's fucking life's frustrating. <laughs> this brother. is frustrating. Sometimes I like, I felt like I was overtrained. I didn't want to go, but I forced myself to go, and I had one of the best practices I have. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you get those days too. But then you go like, you know, I think I'm feeling pretty good, and you go and you start warming up. Like, oh, fuck, my leg's not feeling so good right yeah. now. And then you do your first round. All of a sudden, you're gassed and fatigued. You're like, oh man, maybe I shouldn't. Yeah, someone who. Couldn't carry your jock straps, getting the better of you or something. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. fucking oh, frustrating. I, got, I have 25 years of UFC experience in front of me, and I have learned nothing about yeah. how to be a fighter. <laughs> Wait, there, that's <laughs> that, <laughs> then you learned it all. <laughs> and you fucking got it. You're starting to get it then. <laughs> We're all trying to figure should, this shit should out. Should I ice? There's, yes. Should there, I heat? Yeah. Should I train really hard? Totally. Should I not train at all? Sure. That's the thing, man. There's no, there's, in, in fighting and in life, there's no masters. No. There's no masters. There's some. Pe- there's well, not know. anymore. We fought a water. Stop that. <laughs> Way to go to the north. <laughs> big up, big up the north. You know what? I, you know what I'm saying though. There's no. There's not a. You can't be a master in jujitsu and a master in kickboxing and a master in. You know what I mean? Like each one. You. It's is John Jones as close as we've seen. John Jones puts everything together the best. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So all right, so should we all uh, be doing cocaine and fucking uh, crashing cars and shit? Like it, th- it's there. I can answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would you say that one? I'd say no. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it's like you know what I mean. There's there's things you c- you can replicate and there's things you know. 
Yeah. Uh, at it's, the end it's of difficult. the day, too, I think uh, it's more for the mentality behind it, too. Um, getting up when you don't want to go to practice, mm. just forcing you, uh, you know, getting through it, um, trying to find all the uh, all the good points in training because, in my opinion, I believe that fighting is 90% mental, 10% skill because I've seen some of the best guys in the gym just mm-hmm. crumble. And facts. Pressure, you know really? I mean? so, Big facts. Um, if you just, like, keep your mind sharp and do the things you don't want to do over and over, you just, like David Goggins says, you start callousing your mind. You know what I mean? You start become making your mind tougher which makes your body tougher which um going in there and now your mentality is just i'm gonna kill this dude but if you're just like oh you know i'm gonna skip practice today oh i'm not gonna go today then you just continue to weaken your mind Mm -hmm. and and Mm -hmm. you let your you let you let your emotions control you and that's in every sport too you see that like when guys quote unquote get injury prone as they get older they don't get injury prone. They just lose the will to fight through the injuries. They've al- you've always been yeah, hurt. Yeah, you've yeah, always yeah, 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 you've yeah. had that like injury. That. You've had you've always been banged up, but you played through it. Now you're eight years in the league. You've got your money. And you're like you know you don't worry about the minor leaguer coming up behind you and taking your job. You're like you know what I'm going to take the next month off and heal up. I don't need to work through this anymore. Yeah. And once that kind of switches off in your brain. It's impossible to turn it back on. Once you've made yeah. that decision in your mind, that's like, all right, I'm going to go on the DL. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to heal right. instead of just take the pills and fucking cover it up <laughs> and go out and, and play. I'm just keeping it real. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to learn and to con- work through and, things. And uh, kind of to what you you're both saying, um, I heard Bisbing say this one time. Uh, he's like, it takes it takes confidence to to rest and not overtrain. Oh yeah, too. Because you have to have a degree of confidence. Like, you're like, I got a fucking fight booked. Like, I got to, I'm going to train so hard, do, 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 do. You know what I mean? Like, you f- you'll feel better, like, being at work. But then if y- it takes confidence to just chill the hell out. and do like your let job. Your, and, like, yeah. all right, it's time for me to recover. You know what I mean? Ah, my last session wasn't that good. You know what I mean? I'd like to put a nice nice bow on it and have a good, you know, some good momentum going into the weekend or whatever. But ah, I got to shut shit down. I got to shut it down. That's for a, day a great or two. point because really that overtraining kind of does stem from insecurity, right? It's like I'm just right. gonna outwork it. I'm gonna yeah, outwork yeah, it. I'm yeah, gonna, you yeah, know, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah. And sometimes yeah. It's be a t- pro. Taking a day off can be very mentally frustrating because then you're just pissed at yourself. Damn, why did I skip practice? I probably yeah, you get FOMO. Yeah, then you're just like, oh, the, I just waste the day. Da, da, da. Well, do the guys get on head. you if you miss practice? Is it something where like yeah, if, if you lately, try to, they get on you? Uh, the co- co- coaches, coaches do, and yeah, he's so been does keeping roll. Who's been coming? Who's been missing? And he, he posted everybody how many days they missed. Really? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because. Uh, yeah, puts it up in the group chat. Out. Really? Yeah. So I could well, see that but, being but a positive, but We're, I could also see that being. And that's a, the thing is yeah. like some guys are skipping because they're lazy. Yep. Some guys are, are are being smart. It's all you know trying trying to find a happy medium. Sure. Of uh, and it's hard. It's hard to keep the training up like that if you don't have a fight booked. So um, because I, I, when I don't have a fight booked, I'm guilty of missing days for sure because. I'm not trying to put my body through all that stress when I don't have a fight coming up, especially now. I mean, maybe for the younger guys, if mm-hmm. you're like, you know, 20, 25 and younger, those kind of, all the newer guys, like, they got to put their bodies through it. But, uh, you know, I've gone through it. You know what I mean? I've had sure. my wars in gyms. I've, yeah. I've, I've done all that already. So I have a pretty good grasp on on how to, how to fight, what to do. So, like, I don't need to freaking put my body through that when I'm not in camp. Uh, I still work out. I still stay fit. I still go to practice. But... I'm not going every single day, dude. Yeah. Sorry. It's also <laughs> tough because, like, it's it's so fucking fun. It is like fun. sparring and mm. shit. There's nothing more fun than sparring. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's it's the best. It's yeah. the ultimate. You just it's, get it's to like big kids get to play. <laughs> exactly, bro. That's why it's even it's been a uh, it's been like tough for me to like even like go in the gym. Like the first day, like going in the gym was great. Like seeing everybody again, all that shit. Mad FOMO. And now I'm just like it's like watching all my friends on the playground, and I'm just sitting on the bench, just having to sit there and not, you know, what time I mean? out. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, feels like time out. You Def- know, they definitely stuff. feel like time out, man. And yeah, dude, this has been a it's been a great journey. You know what I mean? When I first got into this, I didn't even think about it becoming what it's become. You know what I mean? I did it more for just. I was a young kid. Uh, I think I was like 19 years old. Me and my some of my wrestling buddies. I wrestled a little bit of high school. We uh, broke into a wrestling room, and we uh, had our own fight night. We watched like a UFC event one day, and we're like, we should do this, you know, like a fight club kind of thing. So we got, we got some MMA gloves, a UFC MMA gloves from like Big Five. We broke into the wrestling room at like midnight one day and uh, had our own little fight night and. Um, I had a buddy, he's like 265 pounds, and he wrestled, and he was a pretty good wrestler too. But we had like the whole wrestling room, right? It's big. And uh, a 
couple people fought and nobody wanted to fight him but i didn't have nobody to fight so i said i'd fight you and he's like really i'm gonna break your fucking arm how big are you at this point i'm one t- i weigh like 165 and he like 265 so he had 100 pounds on me solid right so we go and uh obviously he wants to try to take me down because if he gets on top i'll probably be in some trouble for sure so he he tries to take me down i start striking he goes for a shot but i get there use the whole wrestling room just no out of bounds uh-huh. so like i'm like you know backing up backing up you know fighting to take using down. that terrain exhaust yeah. hunting yeah <laughs> so eventually uh like he has a single leg i'm just sitting on him punching him and nothing's really happening he's like burying his head in my leg my leg so our friends stand us back up and then he came at me again i hit him with like a, i don't even know what i hit him with but i hit him with my left hand and uh i have no train by the way and i end up knocking him out Ooh. Right? so um we stopped uh it was awkward. bigger they are harder they fall yeah. g it, it was definitely <laughs> a, they say. A, an awkward <laughs> ride. Yet to see it. <laughs> <laughs> it was an awkward ride home you know what i mean because like it was a little you know tension in the car but uh <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved to have been in that car. <laughs> what was his name? You say you were nineteen. Oh, Robert. 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 Marquez, yeah. Robert. I was hey, nineteen. Yeah. Why? <laughs> He Are loves telling the story, by the way. He, he always talks about it to people. Yeah, his, his jaw started your career. <laughs> he, <laughs> but yeah, you owe it so all to his jaw. I joined a gym right after that because I was like, I walked in the gym like one of those guys, like, I want to fight, you know? Like Tom Hardy and yeah. uh, Warrior? I guess. I yeah. spy you, guy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so I joined I joined the gym, and I just remember, like, this first day, I'm wrestling this guy, jiu-jitsu class, and he, he triangle chokes me. And I was like, I didn't know what jiu-jitsu was at this time. I just mm. knew wrestling, and I knew, obviously, fighting. I watched the UFC. I didn't really know what jiu-jitsu was. I just thought you can take him down and fight. Mm. And he choked me out with his legs, and I was like, what? This guy what is this gypsy this, bullshit? This guy just choked me out with his legs right now? Like, it probably some, like, little nerd-looking just, guy, too. No, he wasn't, but he saw the dude, but I was just, like, blown away. Like, what the, what was that? How did he just choke me out? I was just blown away. I fell in love with the sport, and as I was gone, I was just like, you know what? Let's see where this goes, you know? I won a couple of fights. I saw the Ultimate Fighter. I was like, I'm going to try out for this show. I tried out, and everyone kept telling me, oh, you're going to be in UFC. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I just stayed humble. I was just, I don't know where this was going. I worked with my dad at a restaurant, you know what I mean? I thought I was going to take the restaurant over. I just, you know, kept winning. Kept Such a well. Greek cliche. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah Greek own, with a restaurant, go figure. <laughs> we own a restaurant. But, um, but yeah. This is going to be my son's restaurant. He works 23 hours a day, just like father. So what, just having one little fight night with some friends ended Shout up. Shout out to Jerry the Malaka, by the way. <laughs> Jerry the Malaka, my guy. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah no, it's just, it's just crazy. Uh, <laughs> having a fight night with my friends just took me on this path of, of fighting. And I never thought I was going to, like, you know, being, I, everyone kept saying, but you were clearly an athlete, right? You yeah, were always yeah, athletic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played know? football. Uh, I wrestled one year. I ended up getting the MVP of my school, so I kind of just picked. It were up. you scrapping in the streets? Were you a tough kid? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I was, well, I, I grew up in uh, like by Inglewood, mm-hmm. and I, I, I was the minority yeah. over there. You know what I mean? Um, I went to a school with all Hispanics, Tongans, and Blacks, and um, I, I had to stand up for myself. I got picked on a lot. You know what I mean? Uh, I got bullied in middle school. Um, high school, I started standing up for myself one day, and I ended up getting in trouble with school. My mom took me out to like put me in Redondo Beach, like it's more of a white school. But uh, yeah, I was fight. I just had to defend myself. I never wanted to fight. I was always the kid who's like, I don't want to do this. Um, but th- that makes them pick on me even more. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I shy away. They get all ballsy, and then I just snap. Boom. Um, yeah, I got jumped into a crew. You made me so, do this to you. Why'd you make me do this? Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> yeah, I, and I feel bad afterward, to be honest. Not really. I'm, no, no, for sure. I don't know why. I have this weird, uh, like the other day at practice. Um, Empathy? Yeah, I think I got That's the California. Uh, yeah. give, it, give it a little more time in Florida. We'll, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll get that out of you. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a blessing and a curse, I would say. You know what I mean? So, um, because I feel like I'm a nice guy. You know what I mean? I'm very loving. Uh, people in high school used to call me a badass teddy bear because I was a really good athlete. That's weird. I was always uh, always nice and just super, super loving, super kind, buying everybody you know, food if they don't have money. Just hey, the biggest killers have the biggest hearts. I like that. Yeah, that's yeah, facts. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, facts. Yeah, yeah. There's, that's one thing I've definitely learned uh, on my path. Like the guys who are like going to be the, you know, like the kindest, the ones with the kindest hearts are always, the, that's, those are like the real ones that are out there like, you know, re- capable of flipping that switch. I think having that antithesis where you can be a really, you know, a really kind, you know, generous, genuine person, you also, you're a protector. So when that line gets crossed, uh-huh. as you said, you had that fucking that snap, snap, a snap yeah, ability. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Those are the guys to watch out for. Then at that moment, I will do anything to f- 
hurt you. Yeah. You know I mean, definitely. I, I get in that mode and I get like that every time I step in the cage. So it's, uh, a little bit of experience on the streets, I guess. So, you say. Talk hey. about talk about your mindset uh, before fights, like uh, like talk about mm. like fight night in the back room b- uh, before walking out, e- uh, or even fight day when you got to sit around and wait. No yeah, one, I, I feel no like I, I feel like every fight's different, you know. Um, yeah, every fight's different. I used to be very scared. Well, what mindset do you want to be in? I just. Uh, I don't know. That's I, I never really think about that to be honest. I just I just make sure I get my mind ready for war. To be honest, but uh, I remember I used to be very scared. Not not anymore. Recently, I've been okay doing. Thirty better. fights in, do you still get excited? Do you still get amped up? Is it just like uh, old hat at I'm this point? I'm more excited now. It's like going to work. Yeah, yeah. I'm more excited now because I feel like uh, training at Kill Cliff has definitely uh, prepared me more for these type of battles, but. Mm-hmm. Before I think I just always had that I guess what is it called um, Like when you don't think You're good enough That uh, syndrome The insecurity the, the Oh you had imposter syndrome Yeah imposter syndrome I never thought I, I don't deserve to be here yeah, They're gonna figure me out I never thought I was good enough And um, I was scared backstage I look at my opponent I'm like dang he looks tough You know what I mean And uh, I was like What do I do I was backstage I'm just like What do I do this I was like you know what Really And so I talked to myself I'm like listen This is what I'll tell myself uh, Like for in the beginning Of my career I'm like you know what You can't back out now you know, you got to get in that cage. It's only 15 minutes. And then I look, I, I find somebody who I know, like, it looks weaker than me. And I'm just like, well, he can do it. I can do it, you know. And uh, I'm always just trying to talk myself. That's some real up. shit right there. I can't. That's I, some real honestly, shit. man, I, I applaud your vulnerability even saying that and admitting that. Oh, yeah, That's I, like, I, I don't but, mind. Um, I'm an open book. But, yeah, I used to be pretty scared. And then just. If you're not scared, you're a fucking crazy or an idiot. And my friend. Really? You're, you're, you're about to stand. You're about to go into a cage in your underwear. And you know you you got you got to be smart enough to know the stakes. He's trying to kill me, and I'm going to try to kill him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, well, millions of people are watching around the world, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And, and a crowd full of screaming, bloodthirsty animals as well. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you'd be, you'd, you'd be, a, you'd be a liar, crazy, or, or stupid to say you know he's not scared or has but no. Fear. You you feel the same today as you did ten years ago when you first started? Um, I mean. Like he said, there's o- it's always a little different. Like, it's not, you can't, things are always different. Like, sometimes you're like, might have less nerves. Sometimes you might be nervous crazy. I think, like, as to what you were saying, with the, that fear and that, like, uh, nervousness, like, you can have those, if you got to put those butterflies into flight and put them in formation and let them fucking carry you. That's, that's there for a reason. That's something for you to, that you can, uh, like, feed off of. You know, interesting. So, so one one fight in particular, I fought this kid Joe Lewis. Right, I'm gonna show you the difference from then and now. This is uh, part of my seventh. Damn, Joe fight. Lewis really is 197. <laughs> and uh, no, no. So I was the main event for this. My card. grandpa always said Joe <laughs> Lewis was the guy. Uh, I was the main event, and um, this guy is this black guy, buff, buff black guy, and uh, he looks scary. And they, uh, my friend, he he dropped the 45 when he saw us way in because of. How scary he looked. He's like, fuck that. I thought I was big, but he not. He he was big. He was just swole, right? And I just remember freaking being. I was like, why do I do this? So nervous. I was like, why do I do this? This is dumb. And like, I don't know why I do this. I'm in the cage and I see him walking out, right? And I'm just like in the cage already, right? And I see him walking out and I just like, you know what? I was like, all my family's here. I was like, they see how big he is. I think they'll be okay if I lose this fight. I think they'll they'll be cool. Right, and um, I was like, they understand, <laughs> like just uh, just the way he looked, how intimidated he looked, and I was just when those doors closed, it just it was a different story. I, yeah, I smashed him, but um, now I still get nervous. Wait, wait, wait! You don't just get the yada 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 the best part. So the doors closed. The, cl- no, the cl- doors closed. We're going, and I just I did my. Look. I always had like an opening combination, and I was gonna do a fake takedown overhand right first thing. Boom, boom. Stiff as a board. He woke up when he hit the ground, and it was just like a wild fight from then. And then second round, he gassed out. I just TKO'd him. So you just yeah. you dominated from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, dominated the whole fight. Yeah. What's your opening combination for this fight? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll see. Don't we'll be see. that open up a book. <laughs> we'll Don't be that open a book. If you uh, said anything, I'm like we're editing it out. We're yeah, that out. But uh, uh, but now a great opportunity for you to put the wrong combo out there. Yeah. I was I was hoping he'd throw a little misinformation yeah. out no, there. No, maybe no, no. I'm gonna go left 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 left, left right. Jab, yeah. and then you throw a fake jab and fucking <laughs> pull guard. You know? Yeah. But now 100 percent not gonna do a flying knee. I'm 100 percent not gonna <laughs> definitely do. not. I have a flying knee knockout by the way. But anyway, um, I. Uh, now it's like I still get nervous, but it's more of like 
I'm more confident in myself and my ability to fight. So I'm not afraid that like to fight. I'm more just afraid of having a bad performance. You know what I mean? Because everyone's watching you, mm-hmm. and uh, I just don't want to go in there and then just get caught with something stupid. And, sure. And which happened in my last two. Well, nobody times. wants to be embarrassed, but, but at the same time, like. But that now that's what I'm most most scared about. I'm not really nervous to fight. Like I'm I'm ready to go in there and have a good time. And but uh. Yeah, no, it's just it's different how it switches, and every fight's different. Like I said, do you only think about the negatives, or do you see yourself in a positive think, light too? I, I, where like you know, you've, you've knocked people out, you've crushed people, oh, you got definitely. nineteen wins. Like, you know, do you visualize that, or are you constantly focused on? No, you- no, no, no. I, I visual. I've been more positive thinking now. Um, nowadays, before I didn't know how to channel it, and now mm-hmm. I'm always just like, I'm gonna crush this guy. And I'm just now when I think about the fights before, I was thinking about ways I was I can lose. Now I'm just thinking about all the ways I can win. I'm just picturing so, you handling like a little shit talk, and when you're like have negative self energy like that, it's like yo, I'm gonna kill you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I'm, I'm gonna not, mess I'm, you I'm, up. I'm not a yeah, shit talker might at all. At all. I, I just <laughs> I, I never I never like shit talking because about well, that one, action. One, that's not me, and two is just I think I look so stupid shit talking and then going out there and losing. You know what I mean? It's just. I would not want to that happen. Ever. You gonna make out with the guys like the chicks are all doing now in their uh, face-offs? No, no, <laughs> no. But I did see that. Dude. That was yeah, that was like, was like, it's like the third time that's happened now. And Just like, because he's from LA doesn't mean he's gay, bro. Like, give him a break here. Doesn't mean he's not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Greeks did invent the gays, right? <laughs> Is that right? You guys yeah. invented that shit? Well, I think they were the first ones, but we also invented the lesbians. So you're welcome. Lesbos, <laughs> yeah. word up. That's a place in Greece, Lesbos. Lesbos, yeah. yeah. Why is it called that? Well, that's where the first lesbian was from. Mm. Apparently, that's the what's way. her name. There's no Maybe way it was true. Lesbos. There's no way that's true, yeah, Christian. Can we? There's just no way that that's factually accurate. There, there's a story about <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A girl from Lesbos liked other women, and that's She's like what the I first heard. Open one. I could be wrong, obviously, but that's that's what I've heard. So yeah. Who knows if it's true? I don't know. I'm not gonna say it is guaranteed, but that was a story I heard in school one time, and yeah. <laughs> and he's been telling it ever since to everyone. Else. Why not? Yeah, there <laughs> is. All do, right? What is true is that there is Lesbos in Greek. Yeah, in Greece, or and actually, Greece doesn't exist. It's it's one of those fake made up uh, American names. I forget the name of this, but like just like Japan doesn't exist. What? Yes. Yeah, what do you mean doesn't exist? It's yeah. the it's the Hellenic Republic. There is no Greece. It's the Hellenic Republic or the the Republic of of Hellenia or whatever. And like Japan, there's no Japan. There's, you know, Germany. It's Deutschland. It's not Germany. You're there's saying the, we have different names for it? Yeah, there's a word for this. And and I completely am blanking on the word right now. But it's like they, they anglicized these names. Like these names don't exist outside of our understanding. Well, like Espana is Spain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. But it's but like. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they could say it in their language. Yes, but, Brazil but with an S, we say it with a Z. Yeah, but that's them. It's like it's like my we should be calling it whatever they call hey, it. Hey, it's my name. My name's Mickey, and I go to tell him, "Hey, this guy over here, this is uh, Dushlandia." <laughs> no, no, my name is Mickey. No, no, Dushlandia. That's what we call you over here. Right. So you're saying whatever the whatever the country calls themselves, we should all abide by that. How could how could we not? It's like ridiculous to me. Um, I I agree. I I think I you know language pretty confused right now. <laughs> so so there's no such so thing like is, Germany. Isn't Germany to Germans? It's Deutschland. Oh, I get it. I get it. And Cr- Christos is actually correct. The word lesbian literally means the resident of the Isle of Lesbos. The term what? came to describe women who love women after the Isle. <laughs> Island's most famous resident, the poet Sappho. The poet Sappho of Lesbos lived in 600 BC. Sappho was an intellectual and a poet who wrote many love poems to other yeah, women. Yeah, yeah, the poem, Although yeah. much of her poetry has been destroyed by them. Wow. How about that? Look at that. So you're welcome. So far, That's awesome. Far. And I and I imagine that she retired to the island of Scissor. Or <laughs> <laughs> no. It's not. All right. Good for her. Sappho. And try to find out what the name of that uh, word I'm looking up is, is where where uh it's a different name in a country is a different name in, in one country than another. There's a word for it. Um and a lot of times it had to do with like straight up racism and imperialism. Like they wouldn't call these people their own name because they were like, well, we're just going to take it over and rename it anyway. We don't really like, we don't need to know what they call themselves. <laughs> so like, you know. <laughs> so like uh, we should be, we should say, we shouldn't say Mexico. We should say Mexico. Yeah. And we should say like Brasil. Yeah. But, but like, we should, but uh, huh? Toponymy? 
No, nah, it's something with D, if I remember correctly. I'll, I, I got to figure it out. I'm blind. But yeah, but it's not even like the the accent. Like, China is in China. What Ch- is it? What is it? Oh, fuck. Pretty sure I heard Chinese people say China. No, it's something with an X. It's like, uh, it's, it's something that connects it to the Han Dynasty. Um, Speaking of China, dude, dude I got a freaking... A conspiracy about the Great Wall of China. Oh, Guys, a conspiracy everyone probably it. knows Christos as UFC fighter, yeah. the Spartan. Yes. But he's rivaled by his conspiracy theories. <laughs> you guys don't know. Christos is a big conspiracy yeah. guy. I just like searching for information that mainstream won't tell you. What, what do you think mainstream gets right? Whatever they want to push. You think but it's like all what, propaganda? Like what, like, what have we been taught that you think makes sense is right? Yes. Like, you don't believe in gravity, right? No. Okay. No. You don't believe in gravity? No, gravity is just theory, dude. You believe in the density theory? Yes, I uh-huh. do. Uh-huh. 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 Yeah, that's a whole different topic. We could be here for a long time. But let's we got go number time, brother. Let's go back to the China. So <laughs> if you look at a bunch of old world maps, you can look it up on Google everywhere. Um, you'll see a place called Tartaria, and where Russia is. Now. Where, where, where Russia is now in a map, there's world maps where Russia is called Tartaria. And in those maps, you can see the Great Wall of China still. So the theory is they think that the Tartarians built that wall. I don't know why. The Tartarians, does that mean the Russians? So no, Yeah, well, no. So Tartaria, Tartaria, the Tartaria so from what I've gathered in research is that there's apparently this old ancient civilization who had advanced technology, right? And they had, like, if you look at a lot of old, old buildings, like in Russia, even in the U.S. too, a lot of old, old buildings, some of the architecture is just mind-blowing, right? And right, like that, the pyramids. Yeah, for sure. The pyramids, too. That, that, that could have been during that time You're as well. You're talking about, like, the 15-foot doors and stuff like uh, that? Well, yeah, that's the whole other theory with, like, giants and stuff. But, yes, yeah, exactly. So some of these architectural buildings are just insane. And they've done some – you'll see some of these buildings, like the wind. they look like there's, like, a basement window. It, looks, it literally looks like it got buried, right? So they think it got wiped out by a mud flood. And people have dug some of these buildings up, and there's more building underneath the ground. You can search this by yourself and look um, on the Tartarian on mud, mud flood. flood. Yes, and there was a CIA on the CIA website that had a document that talked about uh, the Tartarians and how th- they want to hush it up and not teach it. Like the, the Russia basically took that over, and um, basically the CIA talked about how they're gonna. They don't want it to get out and there's a document we can pull it up i'll, I'll send it to you so you guys to show it but uh yeah there's a full-on document that that, that, that shows it. it it went mainstream for oh not mainstream but it went around that document for a while that they pulled up straight from the site and so this the, there's the idea that there was this advanced civilization in modern day mongolia russia and all these uh, buildings they had like these point tops a lot of pointy tops and they mm-hmm. think that they used the earth's magnetic field to conduct free electricity worldwide and mm-hmm. they think that with the pyramids as well tesla had a, had a plan for that as well, well yeah. yes exactly um yes that exactly uh about free energy and mm-hmm. um it, 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 it's just really fun diving into, and um, it's just looking at all the world maps. It's like, why, why are there world maps with them on? There's like, what's really interesting is the flag of Tartaria has like this gargoyle, right? This gargoyle, like this, uh, you know, the little what is it, gargoyle? What I'm saying right? Gargoyle. Yeah, gargoyle? Something like, like they the, sit on the end. Of, they used to be at the top of the buildings, like, like, like they're like, like, like had wings, yeah, little, kind of. little like yes. dog, little uh, Rottweiler dragon. So that was the flag of Tartaria. If you pull up the Russian crest, uh-huh. is a is a Russian soldier. On a horse, stabbing a freaking whatever was on that Tartarian flag, which is very interesting, by the way. And I can show that to you later, but I'm sure they'll pull it up. But mm, yeah, so like you're saying, the Russian Russians might have ki- stabbing a gargoyle on a horse, and basically, like in my theory, is like they took over Tartaria. That's what it means to me. The <laughs> Russians. Um, yeah, Russia. Yeah, Russians. Okay. And uh, there's been there's been some talks about. I see some videos. I don't know how true this is about how Vladimir Putin wants to like expose some of that some of those uh theories and yeah what, what's the value of not exposing them? what's the value of like because uh so they're hiding history that's the that's the biggest thing i believe for what reason exactly showing who you we believe really are I, I, imagine if we, if the world knew we had free electricity and we had they're gonna freaking go if we could have free electricity mm-hmm. that's gonna hurt all the people in the electric companies and for sure and all that right and then i think it goes a lot deeper into like you know um of us being at peace and everybody 
being unified and, mm. and, and living in, in a peaceful world rather than what we're living in now. So Mick and I just talked about this the other day, right? You know, um, we had Sal Greco on on Monday, and you know he's, he's thinking about getting into politics. We're like, well, what would be your thing? He's like, peace. I want peace. And I'm like, all right, how do you sell peace? Package it. Go. Me? You, yeah, go. How do you sell peace? Everybody has uh, – shit, that's a good question. Um, I mean, everyone has to be on the same page of some sort. You know what I mean? But you know what? I think it just – How do you monetize peace? Don't try to convince people that you, what you believe in. Try to just let everybody be themselves. I feel you. Cool I, with that. I'm pro-peace. Don't get me wrong, but I'm asking hey, you. Hey, do you Christos, do it? it's a trick question. Stop trying, <laughs> to, stop trying to answer it. I mean, I, that's cool. I like that question, though, and I like to try to answer I just think that if everybody you – can, You can make a bullet, right? You can't – And you can sell a bullet. Yeah. You can sell them billions of them. How do you sell peace? So, like, so, the, but don't, the answer is you really can't, right? That's yeah. why politicians don't get behind it. And it's, it's to your point about the electricity. I this is going to be a good think, thought experiment for all of us, I for think, all, us here, and for everyone at home. Let's come up with an answer for Gerard's. Uh, so, do you think for that Gerard's if thing. the agenda, mm-hmm. or the people that are in control right now, whoever sure. they are, right? Obviously, Biden's not in control. So, if you think their agenda, they mm-hmm. wanted peace, you don't think they can have it? Of course. If it could with the control of the media and, uh, and and everything, of course, but it's not profitable for them. Like we still have hunger. Why why aren't there free? Fr- this is Florida, South Florida. Why aren't there fruit trees everywhere? Why like why why aren't the why well, why yeah for sure money. why aren't the high there, there's trees all up and down every highway throughout the country. Okay, I, why isn't there? Why aren't they apple trees? Why aren't they orange trees? Why aren't they fruit bearing trees? I got it. I got the answer for your question. Go for it. How do you sell peace? You got you to have the cancellation of greed. Okay. If, if you can take greed out of everybody, that's how you have Change peace. human nature. Pretty much. Change human nature. But that, that's not going to happen, so. Well, I'm just, so what is greed? Power, money. Um, why, why, do we, why do we look for power and money? To feel happiness. No, to fuck. To move our species forward. Right? Because you can't, you need to accumulate wealth and power to get the type of woman that you desire. I don't I don't believe that. You don't believe that? No. Nah. Really? I have a great wife and I didn't get her with money, I'll tell you that. Yeah, but your uh UFC fighter is in great shape, right? <laughs> you got um, you it definitely what it's not like a cloutless thing. Obviously, yeah, there are those women who yeah, they look for only a bunch of gold diggers for sure. No, it's not even a gold digging situation. It a is, a though. woman but a woman is stupid if she's going if she has good genetics, if she's got 1% genetics and she just clips gives that up. Gerard said a woman is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I said she's she is stupid. If she willingly gives away, she she is a resource. She creates life. We can't. She can hold and create life. She has. uh, She can't without us. Much easier for us than it is for her. What do you mean? Right? Like we like. You mean it's much easier for them? Yeah. No, it's much easier for us. They can create one life a year. We can create as many as we want. Oh, yeah. Right? They don't work without them. Right? So the idea of. You know, they they are the resource that creates life. They move this thing forward. So there is, you know, almost a responsibility by them to pick the best genetics they possibly can and move this thing forward. And how do they pick the best genetics? Well, you're tall. You know, you're athletic. You've got good metabolism. You have you you have good resource allocation. You can create an environment of safety and security for me. Yeah, that's all of this. That's all so of this saying, broken you're saying down. Guys uh, are building skyscrapers to try and get a, a choice uh, woman. To try and show how does Warren Buffett compete? How does Warren Buffett compete for ovaries? No, but I don't in a, in a world he, where he's five foot five, five foot five, one hundred and fifty five dumpy pounds. How does he compete for? <laughs> ovarian resources you're saying they do all this just to get women i think everything on a, on, a, on a molecular cellular level but no because like a biological people, way the yeah. people that the elites do you think they're just sleeping with one person no they do whatever they want right? yeah yeah so you're making my point so that's for me. his point that's his point he's saying like yeah they want they want that, and they want to. But I think it goes that. bigger than that. I think I think it's more about the power. I don't think it's what about is power getting getting women because I mean. But what is power? Ger- Gerard might be projecting a little bit here. <laughs> what is power? How <laughs> powers control? Powers control. Yeah, I can do whatever I want whenever I want. 
I think they're more you can't do anything about controlling about the masses than they are about fucking women. I'll tell you. That. I, I don't think that they're. I don't think that those two things are separate. Mutually, I, yeah. I don't think. Yeah, I think I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I think those two things are combined. Really, I do. I really do. I do. Chinggis Chinggis Khan no. took over how many how many societies? What do you think? What do you think their agenda is? Just uh, well, there's a whole lot, but I, I mean, obviously controlling population. But I, I'm a big believer in like obviously do do do. Do you believe in, for example, the Illuminati? Yeah, but I, I think that the Illuminati is a it's a catchphrase. Free, Freemason, all all, all the, that all stuff is just let, let's just call it what it is. It's it's global elites. Whatever, yes. however, you, whatever name you want to give them, can anybody actually say that there is no global elite at this point with the no, World Economic no, no, Forum no. just screaming it in everybody's face? I mean, so so I just blanked out. What was the question you asked? Uh, I asked what you think their agenda is. Uh, um, yeah, so me and my mine's probably a lot different than what most people think, but uh, I, I definitely think that is a people a bunch of devil worshippers who are just go on making <laughs> ma- are, are demonizing the world at this point. You know what I mean? If you look at all the celebrities, they're doing all these satanic rituals in their concerts, and um, they're pushing all these like weird freaking things on people, and they're trying to corrupt little kids in schools. And to me, I just think about it as all, just demonizing the world at this point. They're just to doing, what end? Huh? To what end? Exactly. Let's assume you're exactly. right, but exactly. like to what end? Why? Because cor- I, because you think they're evil? They're, yeah, they're evil. It's pure evil. They're going to do anything they can to destroy because they're they're living comfortable. They're rich. They got everything they want. They want to hurt us. You know what I mean, and, and, and control. And Is it what it makes them feel good to hurt us? I just think it's just a part of their agenda. That's what they want to do. That's what they've been. Well, it's like their forever. DNA. Like that's just it, some people are born that way. I mean, it goes pretty deep into that. Yeah, it, yeah. I do think that. I think there's royal families who mate within their own families, and um, those are the people nobody get to see. Can see it. It's just the people that are. The, you think the elites are there? The people above them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I know I probably sound like a crazy. Shaq person. is rich, but the guy but, uh, who signed Shaq's check is wealthy. I mean, look at look, so look at LeBron James, right? Mm-hmm. There's a video of him um, doing a whole satanic ritual before his game. He throws up this. He throws up the Illuminati. He does a little. So what do you think the devil's around. giving them power or something? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's all this whole sell your soul thing to the devil. I think is a lot real than people think. And if you're gonna have a bunch of eyes on you being a celebrity, so there's something you got. Not only do you think LeBron James sold his soul to the devil. But you're wearing his jersey nah, today. It's not a LeBron <laughs> jersey. It's his teammate's jersey. Choose my favorite number. It's Lonzo Ball, but I don't really care about that. I just like the number. And uh, I, I don't know, man. I, I I know. It's obviously. So let me ask you this. If, if you can sell your soul to the devil, can you sell your soul to God and get absolutely. powers from it? I Not get powers, but you can have eternal life. Eternal life. Yeah. If, if you just. Invite, uh, accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Try to live your best, uh, being a sin free, sin free life. Help, um, yeah, just follow the path of the Lord, and yeah, I think that's a lot better. And uh, um, and you were born again recently, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So getting into all these conspiracies have actually brought me a lot closer to God, and uh, it may just made it a lot more real for me. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm doing my best just to be best version of myself you know what i mean i try to sin as least as possible um if i sin it's by mistake it's not on purpose um besides smoking weed a little bit if that's and, a sin and using your your hands to physically beat it up no i don't no that's that's, that's, a, that's a that's, that's a no nah, that's a that's a that's that's an agreed upon thing if you're yeah. assaulting people yeah, that, then different. that's a sin but if you're if it's an agreed upon thing yeah that's is that how that works of course, and that's a, yeah. so you, what is war? Is I mean war? It, that sol- that soldier signed up, and so so did the soldiers on this. Not side. always. So if they were drafted into it, the war's tough. War's a tough one for the for the you know the Christian faith. Yeah, I mean, no, you I got all those crusades. So Fighting definitely. Soldiers don't go to you know, don't go to hell. And the main sins the, is like thing. don't lie. You know, don't commit adultery. Don't kill. Um, you know, don't wish, you know, don't be harm on others. Like, don't talk down on people. And uh, you said you're you're off porn. Yeah, yeah. So I gave. A, I, I stop. I don't watch porn at all. I don't masturbate. Um, it's a lot easier for me because I have a. Now none of our fans can relate. <laughs> well, it's, it's easy. Well, for Gaz me. Gas Digital's <laughs> out. Gas Digital's out. I got a beautiful wife at home, and it's actually made of our relationship. 
I, don't, I mean, our relationship was always pretty good, but it yeah. made our sex life a lot better. Let's put it that way. Poor girl's worn out. She wants you to go <laughs> back to masturbating. <laughs> How, uh, elaborate on that. Um, so watching porn and, and, and masturbating, just anytime, you know, I feel the urge or something, I want my slow release, you know, go and rub one out. You know what I mean? It's easy. And then how often how often were you uh, partaking in the, the sin of the flesh? Uh, at least at least once a day. Mm -hmm. um, at least once a day for sure. Or maybe sometimes I'll skip a day. But it's those are rookie numbers. Those are, gotta, those uh, are rookie numbers. You got to get those on, numbers on, up. On average, about one a day, maybe How do you think two. I got these forearms, Cat? <laughs> but, uh, you know, stopping all that wasn't as hard, to be honest. And um, <laughs> it, it, really, it really wasn't. To be well, it wasn't that it hard. It wasn't that hard. Yeah, hard. Yeah, I, I got you. <laughs> 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 little, I just got that. funny guy over <laughs> here. But uh, I actually think. So, um, so why, really, is that, why is that strength in your relationship? Because our sex life a lot better, mm. which um, I think just, just made it. I, I like being physical with my wife. It just makes me love her so much mm. more. And uh, I feel like it's a. It's a reward you oh. know, to, to 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 sleep with my wife. You know what I mean? I, I it's a like instead of getting that uh, automatic like fix. Yeah, you, it yeah, makes yeah, you kind of yeah. you have to wait and you have to. See, Gerard hates waiting, and it doesn't mean not that much I, on discipline. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. What's nice too is that I don't ejaculate every single day. You know, some some days uh, I just go through it all day. This. Is not where I thought today's podcast would go, <laughs> but I'm happy we're here. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no uh, Tartarian cum flood, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. And uh, if you guys think I'm lying, you can go ahead and think so. I'm well, just gonna wife, take your word on this one, but my wife knows so well, so you can ask her for reinsurance if you'd like. Mm -hmm. But uh, I thought yeah, they could try it themselves. But I honestly, she she is a beautiful one, but I did think she looked a little sticky the last time <laughs> I saw her. I wasn't gonna say anything, but like her fingers were all like you know. I actually think. Um, they can help a lot of marriages if people do do that because stimulating the mind with porn all the time and, mm. and masturbating is just i feel like because it did it with me it, I, we weren't as frequent in yeah. the bedroom you know what i mean really uh, yeah, yeah i mean when i was watching porn and masturbating i can just get my fix myself if i want to so um now now i'm sleeping. and and now that she knows that like i'm not uh i'm not watching porn and uh masturbating in the cell she's cool with like Anytime I want to, we're good to go. Really? Uh -huh. it's, Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, she's here on my back. So she, she, she's... Uh, there, there's some that. people... I've, I've heard Jordan Peterson talk about this a lot, where it also can create an environment if you're into like you know, like super like violent or like whatever your sexual fantasy is. Yeah. It could create an environment where you're you're, con you're consistently displeased with or un uh, not unattracted, but like disappointed in in your sex life with your partner mm -hmm. because it's like okay this is where i fish hook you and yeah. shove this in your mouth and this is where my buddy fucking like like jumps yeah, out of the closet it really it's like fucks with your brain. yeah the, so like people that are doing like this There's or watching this increasingly uh what would you consider it like extreme pornography and then they go and they just you know have their normal sex life with their partner they're like ah, this is this is boring she sucks <laughs> she wouldn't even let me stick a blender inside of her like what the hell like yeah 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 you know? it's uh it's it, it, there's a lot actually a lot of people come out with like science and how it ruins the brain and how uh -huh. it desensitizes you and it's just gonna make the sex life not as good and when you have a partner huh. you that make i mean that makes the the last part like it would make the sex life worse because you're already fucking yeah unloaded yeah you're not you know mm -hmm. you're not ready to ready to rock but uh, what about what about the brain? What it, what does it do to the what does it do to the brain? Well, that desensitizes the brain. That's what, what does that mean desensitize? Like like your brain, you're watching this amazing like pretend thing. Whatever your fantasies are, whatever your brain likes to think about in fantasy world and whatever sex you're into, and I think it progresses worse and worse. The more you watch porn, I think the deeper and deeper more erotic you want to go you know you start with regular you know one-on-one -on -one porn then you got two guys one girl then you uh, got fucking no, orgies no, and shit. No, maybe no. not you so I'm, I'm team i'm team christos on this yeah, you guys are watching two guys double team girls bro and if you've been watching porn shit? for a long enough <laughs> and it's not like you get bored of the same shit and it's not like, like you go searching either Pornhub and x videos are like hey bud <laughs> I got a video you're really gonna like right here, and you're like, "What?" And then you got the algorithms, freaking oh. not freaking. And then you start getting into the animated <laughs> shit with the hey, fucking hey, with hey, the with the octopuses, and you're like, "All right, I got I got I got to put the phone down." If for an this hour. is what you guys are watching, I couldn't support 
you more getting off of this shit. <laughs> no, I'm, shit's fucking wild. This it, guy's boring porn over here. This guy's watching PG bo- porn. It's porno. Yeah, <laughs> porno. I just like my good old fashioned missionary porn. <laughs> you know, the way what God intended. What are you into, Mickey? Bush. He likes Big Bush. Big Bush porn. <laughs> See it on the iPad all the time. Um, yeah. <laughs> what kind of porn am I into? Yeah. Like, I mean, nah. I I like you know, fucking like just. Some, something that I would have to like build to like get like my wrap my head around like I need Mickey to, like, Gall suspend, fucks Mickey Gall his favorite his porn belief. he likes the AI <laughs> yeah, of, of the of the not, EA sports I'm like I'm like too I'm like too smart yeah. so that it, it, like if it's it's not me doing it yep. I'm like this is just some other guy I'm his watching, favorite right porn here, is what is, is putting on the UFC video game and playing himself versus himself and just keep taking his <laughs> own back pound. just keep taking it well, <laughs> I didn't even get in the video game I got. About that, my twelfth UFC fight, and I've never made the game. Yeah, I gotta get. I'm out. I want to get on that mic. I'm last. Yeah, we both last got eleven. Last Twenty-two last UFC fights between us. You're about to. You're about to go yeah, one yeah, up yeah, on me. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all right. You just got a little setback. It'll be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for the return of Mickey Gall. Yeah, awesome. it's gonna you know be impressive. I mean? yeah, crazy. This guy's been well. fighting for three years with a broken back, man. It's like, that's Nuts. Crazy. Yeah, uh, I I earned it. <laughs> you earned the time off. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean I earned the injury too. Oh yeah, yeah like yeah, like yeah, we were yeah, saying yeah. before, just you know, train, just being a freaking hammerhead Over. for years and just going, going, going every day, every day, every day, two times a day, two times. You know, putting your mean? body through the ringer, but that's yeah. the only way you can get your body. I was tougher. basically like, I was basically like Gerard with porn, like three times. A day. Ah! Three times a day. Go 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 go. go. Ah! Just pounding away. Just pounding, <laughs> pounding. You, you just pounding. Uh, the ripping and the tearing. The, the ripping and the, the tearing. The wild I women. I don't know the wild too, women. Too appropriate. But you guys ever? Uh, uh, we, ha- we we we. I think we hit the the, the appropriate level with Tartarian y- cum flood. Y- yeah. well, we can do whatever. We can go wherever we want from there. Speaking, <laughs> speaking <laughs> of cum, you ever you, you ever uh, see how many times you can ejaculate in one day? Sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What's the record? Well, I I you know. I had a girl that I was madly in love with, and I, the most that we ever did in one day was twenty-one. That's my that's my record. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Well, you, 21. you blew it. Can you I ejaculated twenty-one times. You did it twenty-one times. times? There's no way, bro. Huh. There's only twenty. Were you taking dick pills? Brother, huh? Were you taking dick pills? Was it performance enhancers? Or something? There was not. But you there was did not. that ejaculated every single I, time. But I was, dude. I can no I can tell you exactly when it was. It was it was in fucking Boston. April thirteenth. It was. Jeez, it was impressive. it was September thirtieth. Two days after my fucking birthday, and the season had just. Ended. I was 227 pounds of wrought iron fucking steel. I was 24 years <laughs> old, and dude, I I hadn't seen her in months, and I was ready to go. 21, bro. I did and she was eight. a babe, bro. She was such was a babe. Off. I just like she was so hot, man, and so good that uh, I was well, like, all right, Gerard's let's go. a two pump chump. Yeah. So I mean, what are we talking like, about here? He didn't get the. He well, didn't I build mean, up the, the friction. The, the more you ejaculate, the longer it takes. Yeah, you know my man, <laughs> my so, man. Twenty one. I'm thinking like, bro, this is the greatest weekend of my I, life. This girl you was, only get sixteen hours um, in a day. That means you're you're, this, you're coming less than an hour. This poor girl average. was trying to. I was. It was in her dorm room. I was. This girl was trying to bear crawl out of there. I was like, get back over here. I ain't done what you <laughs> and get. And canceled. <laughs> That's impressive. That's impressive. No, that was great. She's getting married soon. God bless. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the happy couple. Shout out to the happy couple. Oh uh, man, gotta go in there, bud. Twenty one. Twenty one. I don't believe. Can, I don't know. I, I swear. Are you? Are you so saying in a twenty four hour period here? Yes. You only get sixteen hours. You sleep eight of those hours, right? No, no, no. 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 He's, to- he's 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 not. I don't think he's counting sleeping hours. No, dude. Oh, dude, we All didn't day. leave the bed for the whole weekend. The whole we just that she was she was great. She was awesome. She was incredible. Man, yeah. Well, that's a a, power right there. <sighs> it was long ago, and it was far away, and it was so, so much, much better, better than, than it is today. today. Oh man, yeah, that was good stuff, bro. But I don't know, man. Like, what? What? It's like when you have that connection, you can you can rock and roll, bro. You know, like it, it's a different level. And if you think that this has helped you with your wife, man, give it that. That's that goes back to that holistic shit we're talking about. Like, yeah, guys are like, I can't get hard for my wife, and they're top popping dick pills. It's like, have you tried not jerking off? Yeah, there's, <laughs> actually, there's actually. Have you tried not? You know? Have you guys you. ever taken a dick pill? Yeah, you have. Yep. Uh, yeah, it work. in high school I took a Viagra. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why? Huh? Because You're in high school. I almost exploded I my heart. I almost destroyed my heart. Because I was about an eight ball deep on the road, and I couldn't. I couldn't perform. I took one of my buddy's blues, and you uh, took a, a Viagra. And on cocaine? 
Would not recommend. No, that's not good. No. Yeah, I'm surprised your heart. Most doctors explode. wouldn't recommend. You know it. how many times people have told me they're surprised my heart hasn't exploded for different <laughs> reasons or whatever. It will get there one day. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah. But um, what does say right now? Dang. Uh, we're talking dick pills. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you yeah, took a Viagra in high school. I, my, 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 I don't know. My, my my brother had some. I forget why he why he, he was using them, but um. And uh, sorry, Yanni, but uh, <laughs> he, gave Yanni. Me, he gave me one because I heard Yanni you, Yagos. Can, you can fuck all night. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I fuck once or twice, and I'm like pretty spent. You know, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I wanted to stay hard. And you're firm too. Yeah, you're firm. Oh, yeah. And uh, so yeah, I just did it because I thought it was a cool thing to do. But mm-hmm. yeah, I never did the ones that. The liquor store. I don't think I've ever done one of those. Like oh, one of those like gas yeah, stations, yeah. like I've never, horny I've goat never weed. One. A funny horny, story. You never tried. You never tried horny it. goat weed. I'm not, no, I've never taken so, a dick pill. No. For my brother's bachelor party, mm-hmm. um, we got one of those dick pills. And we put it in his drink. You know nice. what I mean? Nice. And uh, dude, I'll tell you, my man. Oh, my you, brother. You, my oh, brother tested. <laughs> and my brother him. tested positive and lost his job on Monday. <laughs> yeah, that's what <laughs> no, I'm. That's no, what. That's what I'd like. Like. You know what I mean? Like I don't think we could take one. Guys, it, being in the like the UFC, getting USADA tested, like they didn't. Uh, no, nah, didn't dude. John Jones get busted with one of those things or something? I like think that? a lot of people like they uh, they get busted for something else and then they blame they it on it. Uh, uh, I, think uh, that's, uh, I think that's what happens. Yeah, so, that's. I don't Anderson know. Silva says some shit. The, about can, that the, too, right? the Canelo Alvarez. Uh, Rafael defense. Palmeiro. Yeah. Rafael, Rafael, yeah, Rafael yeah, that's Palmeiro. right. That's right. Yeah, Palmeiro. baseball player. Yeah, Hall of Famer. That's the well should be. Should be right. Yeah, but L R Janine and CoQ10, you'll be fine. The LRG9 CoQ10. Just take some dark chocolate. <laughs> Just a little bit of the chocolate. Stud little dove bar. Yeah, maybe don't do so much of the whiskey. But, yeah, man, I mean, it's all good stuff. Science! Trust the science. So when do, when, when, do you, when do you guys think you're going to end up settling down? <sighs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you this, man. Having a ha- having a significant other is like. Well, I guess you guys got each other, so <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> but you still have. Why one. Are, are you, you gay? gay? <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah. there's, there's, there's nothing else like having somebody there that just you know you share everything with, man. I, I, I that, special about. That. I'm jealous of it. I'm jealous of it. Not legit. Like you know, you guys love each other, and that's dope as hell, bro. And that's you know, uh, that that's. I don't think that's something that you look for. I just think that's something that finds you. You know what I mean? Like you're right. It does. You know, that's funny. Before I met my wife, I was looking for her because I was single for four years. I was 24 years old when we met, and um, 33 now. And I was like, when I was like 23. I was just looking for a girl, and I, I find a girl. And I'm like, oh, this is the one. This is the one. Uh, not the one. Next, and I was like, you know what? Fuck! I'm. I stopped. Kind of a. You're kind of a I lover stopped. boy. Like yeah, you, yeah. you fall I, hard. I wanted a relationship at the time, right? But then I stopped looking for it. I was like, whatever. I'm just gonna, mm-hmm. whatever. And then she just came out of nowhere, <laughs> swept me off my feet. How about that? <laughs> and you've been coming from out of nowhere ever since. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. so how many fights do you think you got in you, man? Do you want to fight in your forties or what? I do. If I can, yeah. if yeah. I can, if I'm still making decent money, um, I won't do it if I'm not making money no more. I'll tell you that. If, but if I'm making decent money and I can, you know, because I want to, you know, invest the money to be smart about it. Mm-hmm. And so if I'm still making money, I'll fight as long as I can, to be honest. And because uh, I just it turned into it, it, it turned into a passion. It, it didn't. Start I think. As a I think it the money started. I passion. think the money is only going to get. I think the money's only going to get better. It started as a and hobby. Like, and like by the time like we're in our forties and shit, like we maybe like you know be doing something else but also like fight like one time a year and Maybe, it's something yeah, to make yeah, a yeah, you know. Yeah. A well, you guys definitely could have longevity. You take good care of your bodies. You're not big partiers. You're not big drinkers. You don't do yeah. any of the self destructive things that would shorten your career. Not anymore. Right. Yeah. So I mean, not anymore. So the you know that that half of the battle you have. The other half is kind of out of your hands, right? Like you yeah. said, like you know, there's injuries. There's things you could chalk up to the game. But as far as doing everything in your power. To be successful and to have longevity, you you guys really do treat this like professionals. Yeah, and that's shockingly something that I, not a lot of guys do for some reason. Like guys take it, they take the training seriously, but they don't take the diet seriously, the nutrition seriously. You're talking about fighters, yeah, they love the nightlife too, man. You oh, know, it's yeah, a very yeah, big yeah. Vegas well, thing. So there, there were, I mean, I know you're pretty strict and stuff. I mean, I think a lot of fighters are as well, but I think at the end of the day, we're all adrenaline junkies, and mm. uh, but some people can control it more than others, you know. Um, um, I mean, there's a lot of fights. That's, that's a great point. That's a great point. Any drugs at all because they're pretty disciplined. But um, 
Yeah, there's a lot of fighters who just love the adrenaline and they just search for it. Bro, six can. months in between fights is a long time. There's no way I could handle it. I, I couldn't hit. I couldn't handle the bus ride home after an 0 for four, and I had a game the next day. I'd get drunk. <laughs> like there's no way I could handle six months. There's just no. There's no, like the the mental capacity you have to have to come off of a loss and sit there for months and eat it and hear everybody and still go out there and want to do this shit. It's fucking next level, man. Yeah, I think we're definitely a special type of human being. Uh, to, to want to do this for sure, but it's weird because it's, you know, uh, it's a warrior it. shit, man. Warrior shit's in, it's it's in our DNA. It's in, it's in a lot of people's, and it ha- it lies dormant. It doesn't get you know expressed. It doesn't get to you know be tapped into. We get to tap into that on a daily, and it's fucking it's it's a drug. It's mm-hmm. it's addicting. It's there's when like winning a fight, man. Uh, you've heard me say it before. There's nothing you could smoke, snort, shoot, or swallow that's going to give you that fucking rush. Mm. It's a fucking rush. It's, yeah, a, it's a beautiful yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Once you you fit you 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 win a fight and you can stomp around that that uh, octagon here in the crowd, scream, knowing you just you know you just moved yourself forward. You just you just made a bunch of money. You just you know just all, every all, everybody watching you, all your supporters. You just made a smile. <laughs> It's the fucking best. And, there, and there's a lot of fighters who like the idea of being a fighter than actually being a fighter. Mm. You know what I mean? They like that that everything that comes with being a fighter, being cool. I think every, I think yeah, I think there's that. That's there's a very lot interesting. Of, that's that's a great point. A perfect example is for a person who likes the idea of being a fighter than actually being a fighter is a uh, CM Punk. You know. And you had to give it to him hard, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think he uh he wanted to try to do it. Yeah. And just I think it got too rough for him. And mm-hmm. He was like, "I'm out." Yeah. Well, they, honestly, man, that's the entertainment business too. There's a lot of people that want to say they're an actor or they want to say they're a writer or say they're a comedian, but don't want to do the fucking grinding you have to do off camera. No, I, I think that's the thing. The yeah, cool, but it's yes, the, tough. yeah, a lot of a lot of like there's a lot of like fighters and people who get into it just to like, yo, I'm I, I do UFC, bro, yeah. and, like be going like you know go. Fucking bank chicks, and when yeah, they're walk, out with their when they're out with their friends, they're fucking feeling tough and walk shit. Walk around the Jersey Shore like they're carrying briefcases exactly. everywhere. Exactly, yeah, I got yeah, two yeah. TVs under their arms. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, I think uh, cool uh, affliction get, get, shirt, bro. Get, you fight. They get filtered. They get kind of filtered out, you know. And uh, but it, I think also it's there. There's there's a reason why like it's it's fighting. It's it's the ultimate fucking ex- like. Mono we mono. It's the ultimate sure. expression. It's the ultimate uh, contest. Like, you know, playing a game of one on one's cool, but how about like f- fucking knuckling up? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Throwing down with no rules. You will. Go it, ahead, sorry. You know what I mean? Like that's 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 the ultimate like competition. Sure. You know. You will truly find out who somebody is when you put them in a battle like that in mm-hmm. a fight. You'll see. Their true colors come out, you know, because you get all these people who have all oh, this big ego. I talk crap, you know. I'm tough guy, tough guy. Then you put them in a cage with somebody, then you see them crumble real quick. You know sure. What I mean? So I, that's why that's what I love about it. I think um, you get to really, really find out who you truly are. You know what I mean? When uh, you get in that fight or flight mode, I imagine it's even afterwards. I mean, because my that's what, what Teddy Teddy Atlas calls it the ring of truth. The ring of truth. Oh, the I ring like of that. truth. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. there's no there's no facades. There's no bullshit. There's no acting in there. Sure, it's all you know, killed, I mean? you know what I mean. It's yeah, you yeah. Go towards the fight, or you shy away from it. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I think you know that was kind of the the. You know, the, the pep talk, I guess, my old coach gave me when I was, I did the Pan Ams, I told you. I tore my Achilles. I did the Pan Ams, you know, uh, six weeks after a torn Achilles. I hadn't really trained, and I told him, I was a blue belt. And I'm like, all right, dude, like, I got to take this guy down, and I got to fucking get side control and get an arm and get out in under a minute. Otherwise, I'm done. And I ended up doing six uh, full-length, full-time fights won the gold and I'm oh, done. Nice. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done with it. I'm done. <laughs> and he like bullied me into doing the absolute afterwards and I'm like, "Bro, I'm fucking done." Like, you know, you got to push yourself. At this time, I'm 29 years old. I had already had one pro career. Like, you don't need to push me, man. I know <laughs> I'm the most competitive guy you've ever met. I'm done. Like, I'm shot. I go out there and I, I beat somebody. It was like a uh, in the absolute, it was like a, you know, 120 pounder or whatever. I beat him. And then there was a Congrats. guy. Thanks. And then exactly. And then there was a Gary Tonnen guy who was like 165 pounds. 
they climbed on my back and refused to get off and I'm just and I'm sitting there and I know something's wrong with my I'm sitting there I, I try to lift my arm I know something's wrong with my arm and I'm like man I should never be in this fucking so for six Damn minutes it, for six minutes I'm like this thinking about my coach oh this motherfucker made me fight I'm getting embarrassed by this this month and afterwards he's like you pushed yourself I was like go fuck yourself bro if I was done you were happy afterwards though? I would no I, had, I, I ended up having a torn labrum oh, so I, I knew I was done but I didn't realize I was like hurt done I had a torn labrum torn Achilles and I ended up I didn't go back on the mat for like two years after that man like I was like so pissed off at it oh, and I was like but you. that but that's the thing also I didn't have the mental fortitude or the tenacity that guys like you have where it was like you gotta get back out there I was like fuck this guy I'm done with this shit like it wasn't even the competition I could get myself up for any competition you know you put a camera in front of me you got people watching you do anything yeah, yeah, yeah. the next day when it's over and you got to go into the gym and it's just you that's that's the metal that's the fucking that's the juice that 99 percent of us just don't have in us so you've been uh who you've been training with uh leading up to this fight which uh um, some shout outs to some guys in the gym uh, who've been giving uh, you good work there's this uh new japanese uh kid named yuji he's been he's been down because I, I need south paul's because rick glenn's a south paul so trying to stick with south paul's but there's not very very many in the gym Bye. um and then michael johnson just came back so i'll be working with him a little yeah bit, hopefully and um yeah, that's who I thought of when you said Southpaw. No, yeah, yeah, but he's been out. He had an infection, but now he's back. Um, so I got a little bit of work with him on Tuesday. Um, so yeah, just trying to go with all the Southpaws, but mainly I'm working with Jared uh, Gordon a little bit for some nice. you know, good wrestling. Uh, Alexei, he's a young cat, but he's really good. He's yeah, tall, so I'm trying to go. Like, What's tall. his last name? Alexei P. Something with a P. Yeah, I want to give him a shot. He's fighting for PFL, right? Yeah, PFL the Challenger fighter. Series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he got he got the, he got one of those uh, special contracts. Uh, what are they called? Um, the development yeah, or something. Yeah, he's, I, I think I think he's gonna go far. Yeah, I, I think too. he's gonna go far. He was like a, a champ in uh, Golden Glove boxing. Um, yeah, really good wrestler. He's he a wrestler. Like, he's got jujitsu. He's, he's yeah, well yeah, solid kid, solid kid, and good um, dude too. So I've been going with him, Jared Gordon. And then, Jared's Jared, someone uh, we we're gonna get on soon. Oh, nice. We got to get Jared yeah, on yeah, here, yeah. kind of talk about his we're story. We're actually fighting on the same card. He is. Yeah, who's, yeah. who's he fighting again? Bobby Green. Bobby Green. Another that's right. It's a great Paul. <laughs> that's a great. That's a. That's Bobby Green's a, an entertaining guy. Yeah. Very and he's a scrapper. Keeps the hands down. Throws. You know what I mean. He's. Do, a, you, do you think at the UFC level being entertaining is as important as being good? Absolutely. Yeah, you got for sure. Yeah. That, that'll keep you there longer for sure. If really. You, if you if you're if they can promote you and you and you get fans. As long as you're a game like fighter and you, yeah. you're willing to, you're willing to have an entertaining style. But if you're a born fighter and you win a bunch of fights and lose one fight, they'll cut mm -hmm. you. That's what happened. The other sport in uh, uh, the uh, Elias, what the f really? So if you win a bunch of fights, but you yeah. but you're boring, they'll cut. Matt, you. Didn't he just pass? Yeah, he passed away. Yeah, but uh, right, he got cut after just one loss. Yeah, uh, not two in a row. They weren't digging it. So yeah, so he was born. He would win fights, but he was just born. Do you think that that changes the style people fight? Knowing with that Good. knowledge. Yeah, it could. It, it does. Can. It can, but I mean, see, what is what I think about? So, it do they not want wrestling? Is like just to be like, do they not no, want they people do, wrestling but as around? Long as you're or? Entertaining, like like Marab, like he's an entertaining wrestler type guy. He just pushes, pushes, and um, I think guys are just. In my opinion, are just trying to scrape by with wins because that's double your paycheck extra. You know what I mean? Sure, true. I think if they just give you a flat rate, it's people will be it's able to so fight funny. A harder. You know that's I mean? a good point. I kind so of I agree with that. You you would let it hang out, all hang out a little more. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Also, I'm gonna fight just as hard if it's for no money as I am for. You know what I mean? Because like, you like, love it. No, yeah, but no. I mean, it's like your pride. But it's not. Like, gonna, but it's not like, gonna change the gonna, style you fight. It could. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying I'm going to fight just as hard whether I'm fighting for no money or I'm fighting for... Oh, know, oh so you're yeah, saying that the double pay yeah. isn't incentive The double pay is, is zero and is not an yeah. incentive at all. Okay. But, but I think a lot so of let guys me ask you really this. want that win, so they'll do whatever they can to get that yeah, win. People well, let me ask you this. So, the, so if it was a purse, right? So let's say it's $100,000, and it's $100,000 each, that's $200,000, and it's $100,000 for the winner, right? So right now it's $200,000, $100,000. If it was just a two, if it was just 150 purse, if it was just split, for both guys, it may be a twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, I bet you would see. Winner. I bet you would see people like fucking like. Let's just you Let, know, let's, let's just yeah. throw throw it down. You know that what makes I mean? a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, they would they would be it, there'd be more there there'd be less incentive on uh, having to win. Pressure, That's like the yeah, the NHL pressure. putting the overtime loss point in. They don't want people playing for a tie. Just look, yeah. you get the point. Go go they score a yeah, goal. You don't want people playing for like an, an easy win. Yeah, you know what I mean, so I I think it would it would make sense. But I think it's really it's it's uh the. 
you know, the show money, which is what you you, you get yeah, to walk in there, and then you you get uh, if you win, you get a win, mm. you get like basically the same double. amount. You get so you double your money. Yeah. So it uh, like the reason they do that is because it saves the promotion money. They only they only, they got to pay every other guy half. That's the money. right. That's fair. Yeah. They only got to pay. They only got they got to pay every other guy. So do you think fighters would wins. be okay with that split though? That extra, every, you I get an extra so. fifty just to show, and, yeah, the, and you, yeah, but you yeah. lose out on that fifty for I, the win. I'd be cool with that. What? Do you think fighters would be okay splitting that hundred? What do you mean K? splitting it? Like instead of so like, it's it's a three hundred. Oh, like, so like if me it's and a three hundred thousand so, dollar purse. Time out. Time out. So me and Christos were gonna fight each other. Yes. We're like, all right. Uh, <laughs> no, see that wouldn't work though, because then what if like if my my win bonus was more? No, no. So, so then he's like, all right, you win, and then I'll take fucking. Half well, I'm saying of the, it, so if there's say, a fight say, purse. Say this, say this. So say say we're, I'm getting fifty thousand a fight, and Mickey's getting seventy thousand. But and, and then so instead of the UFC either paying another fifty or another seventy, yeah, I get a guaranteed of seventy five thousand. He gets a guaranteed of like ninety thousand, or and we the, just go rock and we and just fight, we, and then the winner gets yeah. an extra ten twenty thousand. You know what I mean? I literally like was offering you more money. You guys just negotiated down. I said the fight purse is what it is. They have it allocated. So yeah, just but split no, the you're making purse. it sound like you're making it sound like. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, yeah, because yeah, yeah, each yeah. person has their own contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like, like you get like you, when you start, you get t- like ten and ten, right? So the and, and let's say ten thousand. Let's yeah. say two debuters. Just don't get caught up on the money. That's just uh, I'm gonna just so we understand each other. Ten, yeah, ten and ten. You so let's say me and Chris those are debuters. We're both getting ten and ten. So if, if I win, I get twenty and he gets ten. It's not just because we have the same contract on this. Each person has their own individual contract. It's not like there's hey there's three hundred thousand dollars up on uh, on the line. Winner gets gets two hundred thousand. Loser gotcha. gets one hundred thousand. So it's not like there's a there's a split. It's 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 your own contract. It'd be more for like uh, what I'm talking about with uh, with with each person. So for example, if somebody's getting I'll uh, so use it again fifty and fifty right instead of. That contract being fifty to win, I mean fifty to show, fifty to win. Uh-huh. You're guaranteed you get seventy five thousand no matter what. Sure. So, I think that's a little better because that, that could save the UFC some money too. So now if I win, I'm only getting seventy five thousand instead of a hundred thousand. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but then from that from that standpoint too, and I understand what you're saying. You could also be like, no, nah, I'm going to bet on myself on winning. I'd rather do fifty and fifty. Yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. well, that's I what that's literally what I was asking. Would the guys rather take the higher? The higher floor, person to person, or the higher, so, really? Yeah. yeah some people probably wants to guarantee. Some people probably want to gamble. I'm more of the guarantee kind of. Th- guy. See, things like this though is where I mean the PFL and Bellator are so far behind the UFC, but things like this I are, don't think are so. where they can really catch up quick. I don't think they're far behind actually. No, no, not right now. I think they're both. I mean. Maybe at the PFL has been paying pretty good. Yeah, man. Yeah, and uh, Bellator is paying pretty decent as well. So um, I think there's a lot of good up, op- and one one pays a lot of money as well. So I think there's a lot of opportunities for fighters. But I think everybody UFC is the most famous, the most marketable, the most you know. Yeah, until there's a PFL video watch. game, until there's a Bellator video yeah. game, until they're culturally relevant, until they're like they they have a. a, a they have a long way to make up that ground yeah, and being yeah, culturally yeah. relevant. But as far as pay goes, they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're paying, dude. They're paying. Well, that's the thing. I mean, if they get in Ghana, you know, if they get a Diaz That in would Ngannou, definitely make them more uh, culturally relevant. Uh, immediately. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, but also yeah, yeah. at the same time, think about it. Uh, it's not like the UFC has, like, been around for, like, hundreds and hundreds of years. UFC's it's been around been for around 30. 30 years. That's not that long in terms of, like, there could be another fucking something rise up. Quickly. You know what I mean? It's Quickly. possible. If the UFC has done this much in 30 years, why couldn't another promotion... Like, it's not like they have this, you know... We this saw unstoppable it. stronghold monopoly on everything. Like, no. It's possible. We saw it in the 70s with the AFL and the, a- and the ABA. The AFL, you know, popped up, and they took Joe Namath, and they took some of the biggest college stars. They paid them. They paid them. Right. And the next thing you know, the, the NFL was like, ah, we're just going to buy you. Yeah. And then those guys, be, that became the AFC. Yeah, you know these stars. were di- these were entire different things. ABA, Julius Irving played in the ABA. The three point line comes from the ABA. You know they if the if people so you think want to compete you think if a PFL or a Bellator uh, becomes big enough they'll be bought by the UFC like I remember Strike Force was absorbed. Strike Force no, no, the- was owned by Zufa, but you're talking <clears> about a Pride. Pride was bought by the UFC. <sighs> And that's why all the fighters from Pride went down to UFC. But uh, they, they'd ha- they'd have to really put a thorn in UFC side to, for them to do that. But that's that's the easiest way to make your competition go away is to absorb them in for sure. But but what PFL does and is interesting 
is they have fighters up there three, four times a year, and they have this team concept. No, not team, season. Season concept. They, I think they're, they're, they're messing around with a team concept. And that is that very. Was, that was the IFL back in the day. I, I believe I, I just read PFL's looking to, to do something like this as well. Oh, but it's not real yet. It's not. It's not real happen. yet. Okay. It's not, they'll be like a team Russia, team USA, oh, team Brazil. That'd be cool. And that'd they're gonna do cool, yeah, think. but and they're like, like a card. Do you remember, do you remember the IFL? Uh, I've heard of it. It was like they oh, had yeah, like the yeah. New York Pitbulls was like Henzo's team, and like the Militich had like a team, and uh, like. Uh, I, I can't remember all the teams, I've heard but there was like there was like I, I, it was like teams like there was like like uh, I don't know you can look it up and remember all the teams. Big Ben Rothwell was sure. in there, you know, like uh, Dan Miller and Jim Miller were both on the the New York Pitbulls or you know which was Henzo's team. Like it was they they had and they had teams go against each other. Vladimir Matthew Tink Matthew oh, I can't his name Matthew Tinko or whatever Vladimir. You know what that is. No, he was a. Uh, uh, yeah, I've, I've heard of him. I think yeah. he fought for the IFL too. I think he fought Tim Silva to be honest, but maybe not. Yeah, there was that was that was a good little thing. So you're saying the PFL is doing something like that? They, but they've like, kicked it around, yeah. Because the idea is, you know, you're investing so much marketing into making this person that, famous, I, I think and they're that'd only be up for good. two times a year. And if they lose, then like, nah, what am I supposed to do with this guy? Like, right. the UFC has a huge problem right now in that. You know they they don't really have that champion who's going on that ten fight win streak. They don't they don't have you know you don't know who who third or fourth in the division are. Most normal casuals have no idea. And then oh well, this guy's the you know something Nurmagomedov is is the next guy, and no one's ever heard of him. So why do I give a shit about this fight? Outside of being a rabid UFC fan or a gambler, I don't. Yeah, what the yeah, fuck yeah, do yeah, I care? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I watch Justin Gaethje. I like him. I've been watching him for years. Right, so they, it's very hard from a, from a, an entertainment standpoint to build some sort of narrative that makes me interested. John Jones made me interested. Yeah, yeah waited yeah. for three years, and I got I got thirty seconds. You know, right. So now you got now they better hope to God Stepe can put up at least a little bit of a fight. Otherwise, there's nothing. How how do you build a story here? What's the interest? What's the intrigue? Why do I care? Right? Outside of being a fight fan, outside of being a gambler, why do I give a shit? Right? McGregor's their next one. He's their next comeback. But what's yeah. the story? I don't know anything about any of these fighters. Why do I give a shit? Really, honestly. Well, you know a little bit. No, no, I'm saying he's, like. He's, he's, he's speaking from the spot of the layman. Like, yeah. And he's okay. speaking from a business standpoint on how do I attract the whatever. But I think, you know, fighting's ah. primal and it, it's. It, you know, you watch it, you see it, and you you know, you you kind of you kind of have an idea what's going on, and you you feel it. Sure, but I watch Aaron Rodgers sixteen times a year, right? And I can seventeen times now. I see him fall, I see him rise. I have a I have a vested interest in him as a as yeah, a person. Well, even even the PFL with their seasons, like guys get hurt. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, so, yeah, you yeah. you might have like f- five fights scheduled throughout the year, or whatever it is four. Um, but yet people get injured, and they got to. You know, pull out. It's a, it's not. It's a different sport. It's, it's a, a different, different sport. Fucking sport. It's, it's a different, different sport. Different beast than everything else. Yeah, but that again, that's where the idea of the teams intrigues me because, like, let's say you got ten people on a team, but there's five weight classes, and then the coach decides to put this guy in, and then this guy, and then you could get mad at the coach. Half of sports is being able to debate. Oh, the coach should have done this. Oh, this guy should have done that. It's like yeah. there, there's kind of you know there's not like there's not enough drama outside of the these amazing athletes competing right. with one another. You know, there's no. Like, like what's what's there to talk about? What's what's there to talk about on Monday, right? Like a coach kicks the field goal instead of goes for it on fourth down. We'll talk about that for an hour on Sports Center. Like what's there to talk? Oh, you should have thrown the right hook before you took the uppercut, kid. Like you yeah. talk about all the fights, I guess. But um, I think that team idea is actually very interesting. Are they talking. It's an talk interesting thing. You, 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 there's you, there's you, drama. You, you people can connect more with a with a team rather than just one fighter. My heavyweight Ooh. my heavyweights hurt this week, so now my middleweight has to fight against his heavyweight. Drama. Or you can have drama yeah. entry. You have an A team and a B team, and the A one of the A guys get. You got to bring a backup they, in or something. Yeah. You got, who, so you got five you spots, think, seven who people. Do you think so. from uh, from from Killcliff, we should bring on the podcast. Uh. I mean, this is a I mean, there's so people. many people, like, right? But, like, yeah. I'm curious who you think, and then also, like, the audience could kind of weigh in, could, could go, uh, you I know, mean, check out our, our extensive Kill Cliff roster. We got over, like, what, like, over 30 UFC guys on the on the map. We got Gilbert Bellator Burns guys. Would always be a good guy to bring on. Um, I think we got to go. I think we got to get Henry on first. Oh, Henry. <laughs> we got to get Henry. Oh, he, that, a, that'd be a fun I'm a big fan of Henry. Big Swarm. I want to talk to Big Swarm. Yeah, we got, we're going to, we're going to get yeah, Linton on soon. Be good too, and but, uh, uh, Tuco. 
Tugo will be fun. He's just a funny dude. And you Tugo's talk about great. Conspiracies. That's the guy to talk about. <laughs> with, dude. Um, but no, I think as a, I think just from the, the guys with the most experience um, would be awesome. Um, yeah, Jared would be cool. He has an amazing story. Jared's got an amazing story. What yeah. about story wise? Who are you thinking? Story, yeah, Jared. Um, I mean, I don't know a whole lot of guys' stories to be honest. The yeah, we just train together, but uh, I think everybody has a good story. Everyone has a story to give. Um, for but, sure. Uh, it all depends. Uh, who who can who can make it entertaining? <laughs> when you yeah, have yeah. Uh, when you have kids one day, eventually you're gonna let them fight. You think you're gonna encourage them to fight if they want to? I, I'm gonna let them. They're gonna train for sure, but mm. it, it's up to them at the end of the day. But I definitely want to push like a, a couple different sports on them and just to kind of see what they like the most. And I just I do want them to be athletic. I want them to be physically strong. I do want them to know jujitsu and how to defend themselves. So. But uh, if they wanted to fight, that's up to them. Um, I'm all about letting them choose. So I'm not against it. You know, I know it's not the best for the body, but if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. Mm. Favorite uh, fight of your career? One you're most proud of? Anderson Silva. Hmm? You fought Anderson Silva? Oh, you said, what would you say? <laughs> <laughs> you said favorite what? Sorry, you said favorite fight of your oh, career. I you said fi- favorite fighter. Oh, no, that no. reminds me. If you're struggling with memory, rubiesflowerswi.com. <laughs> rubiesflowerswi.com can help spark things inside of you that you've never heard before. My favorite fight of my career is always going to be um, the South Dakota fight. Uh, I headline the first ever sanctioned fights to be held in South Dakota. It was illegal for a while. It was the first time they, uh, the RFA went there the first time they legalized it. I was the main event. Um, I was fighting Dakota Cochran, who actually, <laughs> he did gay porn. He did por- gay porn. Yeah, he did, what? Gay, he did gay porn. Yeah, so I was like, I can better not lose this guy. <laughs> um, but, Chris uh, was like, I'll watch it, but I won't lose to him. <laughs> so He doesn't watch it anymore. He defeated, he defeated it. Yeah, he, de- he defeated it, then he defeated it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, You know gay porn was originated in Greece? I believe it. On the island of... Uh, Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but uh, so he was he was like a, a guy that was on Ultimate Fighter. He lost a split decision against James uh-huh. Vick, so he didn't get in the house. Yeah, guy could take a pound. <laughs> but uh, not with me. <laughs> but uh, no, couldn't so take that Malacca pound. No Malacca. No way. I, I was a big. I think I was a three to one underdog. Um, really? Yeah, I was a big underdog. He just he was coming off a win against Joe Stevenson, who won the Ultimate Fighter, and. Um, I was talking about being nervous before a fight. But, yeah, so I fought there. I was the main event and um, came at him in the first round. I think I lost the first round. Very close. It was a close round, but I think he slammed me at the end and ended up uh, winning the round. But in the second round, I just kind of demolished him. I had, he was shooting. I was defending everything. And then I ended up having a huge flying knee knockout. And um, it was just, a, the man, it was. A, Pounded uh, him out. I, I, won, I won the belt, the title. That's what I got signed by UFC the first Dope. time after that fight. But um, I just remember being in South Dakota. There's nothing there. There's one bar. There's a hotel you stay in. And then the Pentagon. Mm. Now they built a bunch around it. But this is 10 years ago, almost nine years ago. And, um, I went to this bar and they, they had flyers from the fight all over. I felt like the biggest celebrity of my life there. I came in with the bell and everyone's wanting to take pictures. And it was just, it was an awesome moment for sure. And just to win like that, I got the athlete of the night award. I got an extra thousand bucks. I wish I was in UFC. It would have been $50,000. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But, um, and then, but the, the, the next fight that comes close to that was uh, when I fought Shamil, uh, one of our teammates, Russian dude. I uh, fought him in Russia, in Moscow. I had wow. my own little Rocky story. You know what I mean? So I, I was just listening to a lot of the Rocky. Shamil's a beast. Yeah, yeah. Shamil's a beast. You know Shamil. You Do seen I? him? Yeah, you've seen him at Strain the Condition a bunch. Oh, okay. Little Russian guy, um, super, yeah, super strong. He, he looks, he looks a little. Uh, he was, looked in a little chubby at first when he first got came back you. off his got, injury. Got you. Of, and and uh, but yeah. he's, he's looking good now. He's, he's tightened up. Okay. He's, he's a he's a fucking beast. Strong bro. guy. Strong yeah, guy. Yeah, beast. So yes. If you get a chance, watch that fight. It's on YouTube. Um, we just we went to war back and forth. Um, End of the first round, like I think it was like. 50. Dude's weird. That dude looks like he's got a twenty-three year old body and a fifty-three year old face. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I dropped him. Yeah, in he's the first good. Round. He's he's a wrestler, but he's and he's got great striking yeah, too. Shamil's very good. He's he's undefeated, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten and zero. Um, yeah, but uh, I, I I rocked him in the first round. Dropped him. Came back up. Caught him in a guillotine. Almost finished it. And he was like, "Oh, he's about to." Th- um, yeah, they thought I was gonna finish it. Time ran out. Uh, second round. That Russian clock sped up on you. <laughs> <laughs> the the, ru- the the rush the the second round. No, four and a half minutes. That's round. That's round. <laughs> he's, uh, he's round. Second round was back and forth. Um, 
I don't really know who won. I know I won the first round for sure. A second round was kind of back and forth. I'm not sure. I could have gone either way. Third round, I hit him with a beautiful jab, slipped his jab, boom, dropped him, starched him. Mm. Um, pretty sure I broke his orbital. I'm pretty sure Henry confirmed that. But, uh, yeah, because he came back with the hospital, the big old thing. But snapped. He was wincing. They were saying it in the commentator. And then he kind of just pinned me up against the cage a little bit. But I still, like, almost – still punching him, still reversing him. And I lost the split decision really? in, in Russia. Two judges had me winning it. Three judges had him winning it. They had five judges. Five judges. Them. Yeah. Wow. And uh, that fight, I just remember just being in Russia in that environment, all Russian fans. And I'm just – I'm the outcast, a Spartan coming to somebody else's land to uh, try to take over. And Do you was, think that there should be open scoring? Would you like to know that? Would you oh, think it would help you going oh, into? I would love that actually. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. that would be great. It's like in basketball. Perfect. You know what the score is. You gotta know if you got to go. take a three pointer or not. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. I think because if you're down two rounds, you better come in for that hell mary. Are, are you yeah. pretty much aware of when you're up and when you're down, or is it is it always kind of fifty fifty? I think so. And not that fun. Not like if you get a pretty back and forth you, fight, I you don't. You probably know. know yourself, but that doesn't mean that that the judges are yeah. going to have the same. Yeah, thing. yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. you you. We well, talked about Josh Gordon before. I thought he won. Fight. Jared, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, I thought yeah, he won yeah. that fight clean up. He, he definitely beat uh, yeah, Patty yeah, Pimble. Yeah, that was a hundred percent. But you know what? You gotta think about this though, right? So you're a judge, right? Let's just say the judges are not corrupt, right? Just, they're good judges because we don't know what happened with that fight. But you're in a place where Patty has a gang of fans, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gang of fans. So. You know, Jerry, you know, hits him a couple of times, probably clean. The fans are not really loud, you know what I mean? But every time Patty hits him, the crowd, oh, ah, So that's, you, you ah, think that's affecting the, um, their, well, I'm sure there's human. Definitely, it's yeah. in the head. Oh, that kid did something good. Okay, the fans are going crazy over it, you know what I mean? I'm sure that can definitely uh, play a factor, but, or the judges are just corrupt. <laughs> Either way. Again, I think about from an entertainment standpoint, like I'd love to see the fighters' reaction to getting a you know ten nine against them and be like, "What the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck? How like, did the, the the war with Shamil? Like, are you guys like you guys oh, got yeah, like, a, like a brotherhood? Yeah. I bet now, yeah, like yeah, an even know, stronger cool. relationship. Uh -huh. We got the you know we trained a little bit together and. Uh, uh, he's cool, super nice dude. I really like uh, him a lot. He actually hit me up after the fight, and like we became started following each other shortly after. Yeah, he's a real one. Yeah, he's he's really cool, and I just that was one of the rocky moments I had in my life that I just uh, that's one of my favorite fights, and I still think you know like Ong and um, and and Tio both watch it, and they definitely yeah. thought like you know I could have won that, it could have been my way too. It was very very close, but uh, I just thought you know two knockdowns. Me and Gerard are going. Knocked, to, I didn't get knocked going, down. <laughs> me and Gerard are going to Ong's house and eating bugs on Sunday. Oh yeah, we got a, yeah. We got like a, a bug chef fun. coming over and he's making a whole bunch of bug things. It's gonna be really funny because this dude hates <sighs> cre it's not that. creepy crawlers. I, 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 I do that. crickets before, but yeah. I, 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 don't, yeah. I, don't, I do not remember signing off on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's coming. He's uh, coming. Uh, but yeah, man, fuck. This is a great episode. Uh, everybody, check out Christos. Follow. Give give your Instagram and anything uh, else you want to promote. I know you've uh, got some uh, sponsors and shit. If you want to nah, hit, I'm not really just um. I don't use Instagram. I see which of Warrior Greens and all that oh, shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you guys want some good uh, nutrients uh, and you want in a powder form, get your vegetables, Warrior Greens. But uh, no, just um, my Instagram is just Yagos underscore or underscore. Underscore. <laughs> <laughs> underscore UFC So C My first initial Last name Underscore UFC That's pretty much All I use yeah, We'll um, put in the thing But yeah Follow Christos yep. Christos is a real one Christos is one of the best In the world Well rounded Fucking beautiful uh, Great jiu jitsu Great wrestling Great up and down striking Uses all his weapons uh, definitely a guy to follow along, and uh, make sure you watch his fight April twenty second versus Rick Glenn. Yes. What's the name of that? What's the name of the event? Sure. Uh, it says UFC Fight Night. I'm not sure what you don't know what number. Whatever. No, All right. No, April twenty second. Sure uh, watch your uh, check out ESPN. You'll see your boy. Boom. Get that right. W. Thank you for everybody checking us out today. We'll be back on Monday at yeah, one p.m. You, we'll be back Monday one p.m. for the great Mickey Gall. I am Gerard Michaels. Thank you for Christian in the booth. This has been Christian Yagos. Check out next things on GasDigitalNetwork.com and please check out Ruby's Flowers WI.com. That's Ruby's Flowers WI.com. Peace. Peace.